National Broadcasting Company presents the National Football League. Today, from Arrowhead Stadium, it's the Pittsburgh Steelers versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By the U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. And by Visa, the official card and traveler's check for the 1988 Olympic Games. Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, where today the Chiefs' regular players take the home field for the first time since the opening week of the season as they meet the Pittsburgh Steelers. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Kansas City. Tom Hammond along with Michael Jackson, who for eight years was a standout linebacker with the Seattle Seahawks. It's a beautiful afternoon, a sunny afternoon in Kansas City, as the Steelers, with a record of 4-3, and three, meet the Chiefs, who won that opening game here, but since have lost six in a row. And, Michael, the Steelers have one of the best ground games in the NFL, but it's sputtered the last couple of weeks. Over the past couple of weeks, the Pittsburgh Steelers' ground game has sputtered. Last week in Miami, Ernest Jackson was totally bottled up. And if the Steelers can't run the ball, then they have very little chance of winning the game. Conversely, for the Kansas City Chiefs, Christian Okoye is having a great season. He's a rookie, and he leads all rookie rushers right now in this league. So we'll see a couple of fine runners today, including Jackson, who ranks as the NFL's top ground gainer at the moment. We'll also see some quarterbacks. In fact, each of these teams currently involved in a quarterback controversy. For the Pittsburgh Steelers, Mark Malone has completed only 42% of his passes. The Steelers are not very happy with that. Bubby Brister could see action because of that. For Kansas City, Bill Kinney's left wrist was broken last week in Chicago. They have a controversy. Blackledge started the season. He didn't do very well, completed a touchdown pass every 31 passes, and Kenny has come on to complete a touchdown pass every 11 passes, so now he has a starting job. But it should be an interesting game to see who comes out on top. And the Kansas City Chiefs have won the toss, and they'll receive. The Pittsburgh Steelers will kick it off to get this game underway. There's Gary Anderson, the Steelers kicker, and going deep. For the Kansas City Chiefs, we have Moriarty and Palmer, along with uh, Mark Robinson, number 30, whom you saw there momentarily. This kickoff sponsored by Budweiser, the king of beers. This will be Palmer, who takes it at the 11. Has a line up the middle, and is finally up in it at the 30-yard line. He had one man to beat, but Larry Griffin made a saving tackle. Bill Kenny leads his offense onto the field, and here's the way they'll line up for the Chiefs this afternoon. The Chiefs offense, the lowest rated in the NFL, but Kenny comes off a four-touchdown passing day against the Bears last week. Carson, 16 receptions, three touchdowns the last two games. Okoye, 272 yards, the leading ground-gaining rookie in the NFL. And you see the offensive line, Alt, the man to watch there. He's the best up front. First down for the Chiefs, Sequoia and Moriarty, the split backs behind quarterback Bill Kenny. And the give is to Sequoia, the rookie is thrown back by the middle of that Pittsburgh defense, and he maybe got to the line of scrimmage. Mike Merriweather led the charge for the Steelers. Here's the way they line up uh, for the Steelers defensively. Only six sacks, the lowest in the NFL. Willis and Dunn have one each. The Steelers have a good linebacking core, all veterans. Hinkle was last year's team MVP. As you look at the linebackers, Merriweather has been to the Pro Bowl the last three years. And the Steelers lead the NFL with 15 interceptions. Donnie Shell with 51, tops among active NFL players. Second and nine, Paul May joins Moriarty in the backfield for the Chiefs. Kenny will put it up for the first time. Incomplete intended for Palmer out of the backfield. See the numbers there on Bill Kenny, who's hit on 56.6% of his passes and playing today with a soft cast on his left wrist, which he fractured a week ago against the Bears. Five defensive backs, the nickel package in for the Steelers, including Rod Woodson, the rookie out of Purdue, who sees his first action for the Steelers. Page, Marshall, and Carson, three wide receivers, Kenny in the shotgun on third and nine. Kenny delivers incomplete. Intended for Stefan Page, but overthrown by Kenny. 
Hinkle and Woodson covering for the Steelers. And Kansas City will have to punt. There's Woodson making his first appearance for the Steelers, the very talented rookie from Purdue. Phil Kenny gets plenty of good protection right here. He just simply overthrows this ball right in the middle. And it's a good thing he did because Woodson was breaking on that ball very well. He could have picked it off and run it back for quite a, a long ways. There's Kelly Goodburn, the replacement punter. And he's kicking to Woodson, who's deep for Pittsburgh. Goodburn didn't have a very good day a week ago against Chicago, and this one hits and then takes a good Kansas City bound. Wow. Out of bounds at about the 15-yard line. Goodburn got a great roll on that one to put the Steelers way back in their own territory. It's not a, not, not a bad way to get the ball down to your opponent just then. He got a good rush put on him, though. Woodburn barely gets that ball off, and then they're falling into him trying to get to the ball. Uh, apparently, they were blocked into him, so there was no flag on him. It was a 53-yard punt, and so the Steelers have it at their own 16-yard line. They'll mark it to 16. Mark Malone, the quarterback, is going to put it in the air. He's sacked. The ball's loose. Kansas City has a touchdown. is again Michael they put the pressure on Malone he's coming from behind and this is the same thing happened last week Pittsburgh came out throwing the ball and fortunately unfortunately this time he gets sacked fumbles the ball and they go in for a touchdown but last week they came out passing the ball in the same kind of situation Jack Del Rio knocked the ball loose Bill Moss recovers it for the Kansas City touchdown on to try the extra point now is Nick Lowry and Lowry hits the extra point. He now has hit 135 straight. And Kansas City, off the defensive play, breaks on top. They come from all over the world to compete for the Budweiser Breeders' Cup in one of horse racing's most prestigious events, the Breeders' Cup Turf. Witness the excitement as the world's best thoroughbreds compete for the Budweiser Breeders' Cup and a $2 million purse. Budweiser, the king of beers, is proud to sponsor this exciting event. And you can see it all on November 21st as NBC covers the Breeders' Cup races live from Hollywood Park in California. Horse racing fans, this bud's for you. You've never seen a shaver like this before. It's the new 3M Surgical Clipper by Remington. Hospitals are now using it, replacing blades to shave patients for surgery safely and comfortably. And you can benefit from this advanced technology by using the Remington Microscreen Rechargeable. It shaves as close as a blade or your money back. This convenient charger stand keeps it continually charged. And the Lady Remington Rechargeable also shaves without a cord. Advanced shaving technology from Remington. You've got the whole the whole world in your hand with Radio Shack's new portable cellular phone. A price and technology breakthrough. You got the whole world in your hand. Only at Radio Shack, the technology store. Kansas City leading Pittsburgh 7-0. Jack Del Rio coming from an outside linebacker spot knocks the ball loose. Well, they just simply have an outside linebacker blitz. He comes in there, nobody touches him. He gets Malone from the blind side. The ball falls loose. Bill Moss picks it up for his first NFL touchdown. Moss, who went to the Pro Bowl as a nose tackle last year, gets credit for a six-yard fumble recovery and touchdown as you watch it from this angle. Here you see a lot of pressure coming up the middle. Uh, Malone never had a chance on that one. And Lowry with a kick for Kansas City. It'll be taken by Stone at the goal line. Hit hard at the 25-yard line. The ball might have come loose, a scramble, but I think it'll be ruled down. Mark Robinson really applied the hit on special teams. Here's that Pittsburgh offense now, the 20th-ranked NFL offense, led by the embattled Malone, completing just 42% of his passes, the NFL's lowest-rated quarterback. Great receiver Stallworth joined by... Calvin Sweeney replacing the injured Lewis Lips. And, of course, Jackson, the leading rusher in the NFL, behind that offensive line led by Mike Webster. 
There's Jackson who gets the call on first down, takes it to the 31-yard line where he's stopped by Aaron Pearson. Here's the Kansas City defense, that new 4-3 alignment, ranked 27th in the NFL. Four number one picks up front, paced by Still, who had seven tackles and three sacks last week. Linebackers have been a problem, but Del Rio had the big hit on the first series. And one of football's best secondaries, featuring Pro Bowl safeties Burris and Cherry. Ross has a hip injury, and his status in doubt today. Stallworth and Thompson wide left to give to Jackson. Kicks it outside, picks up the first down and is knocked out of bounds beyond the 40-yard line with a flag on the play. Albert Lewis knocked Jackson out of bounds. Abercrombie gets to the outside on that, and that's what the Pittsburgh Steelers really rely on. They rely on getting the ball to their runners and letting them make the cuts up field. Jim Tunney, the referee, checking out the penalty. I said Jackson carried. It obviously was Abercrombie on the carry, and the good run will be nullified by a penalty against the Steelers. Well, it's nullified, but it still proves that Pittsburgh is going to run. Jim Tunney with the penalty call against the Steelers, Terry Long. So it sets up second and 13 now for Pittsburgh. Go ahead, Michael. It, that run just shows that Pittsburgh can run the ball against this defense that Kansas City has thrown at it. And Kansas City's defense has not played very well this year either. Jackson and Abercrombie, the setbacks. Hello. Flag is down, and the play will be whistled dead. And while they sort out this penalty, let's take a look at our 10-minute ticker as the games get underway. No score in those. Whoever would have dreamed that San Diego Both and start. Indianapolis. Number 74, five yards, still second down. Terry Long with a false start. Who would have dreamed that Indianapolis and San Diego would be a battle between two first-place teams? But that's what it is at the Hoosier Dome today. Well, the, team, the strike helped a lot of teams in more ways than one, or it hurt more ways than one. Second and 18 now for the Steeders, who trail 7-0 in the first quarter, 12-24 to play. Malone has time. Complete. Stallworth makes the grab close to the first down. J.C. Pearson defending for Kansas City, but the veteran Stallworth gets 18 yards, and it will be very close to a first down. In fact, they'll measure this is one of the problems that Kansas City's fine secondary is having. They're having to play a lot of zone defense because of the linebackers' problem. Malone has plenty of time. Stallworth just runs down, runs a button hook. He gets hit as soon as he catches the ball, but he picks up near a first down. Stallworth, the leading receiver for the Steelers this year. That was his 18th catch. And earlier this year, went over 500 for his career. The 18th NFL player with more than 500 receptions. He's the 15th leading NFL all-time receiver. And there's Malone, who found Stallworth for the 18-yard gain. And it will be just short of a first down by inches, third, and a few inches for Chuck Noel's team. Blankenship is in at an extra tight end, along with Theo Young. In motion is Young. Abercrombie didn't get much, but perhaps he got enough for the first down. He didn't need much. Mike Bell and Dino Hackett combining to stop Abercrombie. Dino Hackett's having a very fine year since the replacement of Lewis Cooper and Tim Cofield. They've replaced them with the outside linebackers of Jack Del Rio and Aaron Pearson. We see Hackett coming up, making the stop, just hitting up into the middle of that line. But after the problems they were having with their outside linebackers, they made the switch, and they feel like he's playing a lot better because of the two new additions. Pollard picked up the first down on the run. It was Pollard. He got enough, and it's first down for Pittsburgh. Ernest Jackson. Just shy of the 40-yard line where he stopped by Aaron Pearson, the two-year veteran out of Mississippi State. Jackson, the leading ground gainer in the NFL with 454 yards. He also ranks second in the AFC in total yardage. He has 505 overall, but 454 on the ground. After last week's game in Miami, the coaching staff and the running backs for the Pittsburgh Steelers had a little bit of a tip in the locker room after the game. Here's Malone on the play action. Plenty of time. Incomplete. 
over the head of Charles Lockett, the intended receiver with Deron Cherry back in coverage for the Chiefs. Lockett, the deep threat for the Steelers, the rookie out of Long Beach State, might have had it if it had been a little lower. That's the problem that Malone is having. That's why he's only completed 42%. Here you see he's got plenty of time. He's tracking his receiver all the way across the field. And there again, he simply throws the ball a little bit too high for Lockett to get to. He's got to get that ball down into the hands of the receivers if he's going to be successful. Six defensive backs in for the Chiefs on third and seven for the Steelers. The only running back left is Abercrombie. And he gets the handoff. Good running by Abercrombie. Down to the 35-yard line of the Chiefs where J.C. Pearson makes the tackle. The draw play fools Kansas City, and Pittsburgh comes up with a big first down. It covered 27 yards. 27-yard gain on a strictly a draw. Malone drops back, hands the ball to Abercrombie, and he makes two good moves right there and just takes off down the field. J.C. Pearson saved the touchdown there. But that's the running game that Pittsburgh wants to get started. They're opening up their running game through the passes now. Jackson stopped short of the 30-yard line. He got three or four yards. It'll set up a second down. Del Rio and Bell making the stop for Kansas City. Chiefs leading 7-0 inside the 10-minute mark of the first quarter. First touchdown coming on a Jack Del Rio sack and a six-yard fumble recovery for the touchdown by Bill Moss of the Chiefs. Charles Lockett said wide to the left. Sweeney is wide to the right. Jackson and Abercrombie, the running backs. Jackson, Walker in front. Cuts up and is taken out of bounds at the 25-yard line, about a yard short of the first down. Pearson knocked him out of bounds at that point. They ran a counter play at that time. They got Terry Long, number 74, out in front of Ernest Jackson. He turned that corner. He barely went out of bounds. Had he had two more yards, he may have gone down for a touchdown. But they're running the ball a lot more effectively right now than they did last week the whole game. I think that has to do with that little fight they had in the locker room between reporters and coaches and the running backs. Pollard replaces Abercrombie in the backfield now. Three tight ends, Blankenship, Lee, and Young. Malone sneaks it across and gets the first down. Chuck Noll, the only coach to have won four Super Bowls. Saw his team get in a hole early, but mounting a good drive here on their first extended possession of the game. He's got to be pleased with what he's seeing right now. He was very concerned about the running game. Malone is still going, coming out and throwing the ball, but the running game is, is what's so effective and appreciated by him right now. He likes to see this ball being run down the field. Pollard and Jackson are the setbacks on first down at the 24 at Kansas City. Malone on the look-in pass, complete to Stallworth, who takes it to the 18-yard line. About a six-yard gain, it'll be second and four coming up for the Steelers. J.C. Pearson seems to be the man they're picking on right now. He's replacing Kevin Ross. Ross, who normally starts at a corner, has a hip injury, and he's gone out. So Pearson, the second-year man out of Washington, replaces him. Here you see on the screen what happened last week at Miami. Walter Abercrombie led the team in rushing with 52 yards. They only had 97 as a team. Tenth play of the drive coming up. And there you see the obvious offside is Terry Long, who's had his problems with a snap count here in the first quarter, commits another penalty. I believe that's his third. I think what's going on is Chuck Knoll has, has stressed so importantly the running game that everybody wants to come off and do well. I think they're just trying a little bit too hard, the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's gone like a flash. Nobody else is moving. Terry Long, he recognizes his mistake, you can tell. You see that he's bulked up to 265 pounds. He's out of East Carolina, was a fourth-round draft choice in 84. At 5'11", the shortest offensive lineman in the NFL. Second and nine now after the five-yard penalty. <laughs> Fumble, and Kansas City has it. Bell on the ball for the Chiefs after Art still knocked it loose. So a Pittsburgh drive that had been looking good. Malone has the ball off to Abercrombie. It didn't look like they made a good connection there, and the ball is out, and plus 10 turnovers, and 
You can't win that way. We're not a company, but we'll give you a chance to work where there's always a challenge. We'll give you opportunities to learn, to develop, to perfect skills that you thought were beyond your reach. We'll help you build a career. A career that can reward you for the rest of your life. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. The years have passed. We face the task. Those boys I call my men. I wonder, could the ties we made now join us once again. Let American Airlines Super Savers take you to the special moments in your life. The feelings we all share. We're American Airlines. Something special in the air. Hey, Professor. Oh. I thought only students fell asleep in your class. Oh, uh, they're just trying to get these finals graded. You ought to revive with Vibrant. Vivarin helps wake you up. Oh, Government appointed experts confirm Vivarin is effective. Revive with Vivarin. With the designed in sound of a Delco Electronics music system, now the best seat in the house is in your GM car. Delco Electronics, it's who we are. America's favorite pastime returns to NBC as the nation's top rollers battle it out for Bowler of the Year honors. Join Jay Randolph and Hall of Famer Earl Anthony for the PBA Fall Tour next Saturday on NBC. Kansas City leading Pittsburgh 7-0 with 8.56 left in the first quarter after the fumble recovery with a first down at their own 14. Akoya... Good running up the middle for the rookie who takes it to the 21-yard line where he's stopped by Brian Hinkle. Here's that fumble recovery again, Michael. Abercrombie's going to take the handoff from Malone. It didn't look like they made a good handoff. It was a funny type of play there, and the ball is out real quick. Art still gets it out. Mike, Mike Bell comes over and covers it for Kansas City for their second turnover of the game. So the Steelers already guilty of two turnovers, one of them for a touchdown. Paul Palmer in the backfield with Akoya, an all-rookie running back set for the Kansas City Chiefs. And this is Palmer, shakes the tackler, and out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Good running by Palmer, the rookie out of Temple, who is the Chiefs' first-round draft choice. He'd only carried the ball twice for six yards coming into today's game. On this run, Christian Akoya is leading Palmer around the corner, and he tries to put a heavy block on the man. You can barely see it there. Palmer gets outside, and he just uses his speed to make about, uh, he picks up the first down. But Christian Okoye is the one who set that up. His block made the man get out of his way. He actually didn't block anybody. He just got in the way. First carry for Palmer since the opening game of the season. First down at the 30 for the Chiefs. Kenny got rid of it under pressure. Intercepted by Hall. Delton Hall, the rookie out of Clemson, made the interception for Pittsburgh as Stephon Page was downfield, double covered. And Donnie Shell putting the pressure on Kenny forced him to lay it up where Hall could intercept. Stephon Page goes up here, but Delton Hall's in perfect position to make the interception, and that's a turnover for Kansas City. I was a real worry ward about my sales figures. Hello. Yeah, hi. Uh, how'd sales go today? It yeah, looks good to me. Then AT&T came through with Watts data transmission. They designed a system using my Watts lines to collect data automatically from my stores all over the country. Now that my sales figures come with my morning coffee, I can concentrate on what's important. And so can everyone else. From equipment to networking, from computers to communications, AT&T is the right choice. There are lots of ways to pull for the U.S. Olympic team. The easiest is when you pull out your Visa card. Because whenever you use Visa, we'll make a donation to the team. So pull for the team. And if you go to the 88 Winter Olympics in Calgary, bring your camera and your Visa card. Because the Olympics don't take place all the time, and this time the Olympics don't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. As long as I've known, Tom. I need help. He's there. I'm glad to see you. 
Stay with you? Figured you wouldn't mind. And when the last craze rounded up, you head for the mountains. Boy. And the beer that goes down smooth as a mountain stream. Sure are you one. How about this in here? Head for the mountains of Bush beer. Hi there. You know, Jay Leno's hosting The Tonight Show this Monday, followed by a rerun of our show, Late Night. Gosh, Dave, you know, hosting is so much fun. I don't think I'll ever get tired of it. Yeah, me neither. Two teams trading replays. This time, it'll be Donnie Shell and the safety blitz putting on the pressure. He puts the pressure on Bill Kenny. Kenny just lets the ball go. He's throwing into double coverage right there. As you see, Delton Hall picks off his first pass today, his second of the season. And that gives the Steelers 16 for the season. That leads the NFL. Flag down as Abercrombie pounds it up the middle to the 30-yard line, but the penalty flag went down immediately. Jack Del Rio making the stop. There seems to be something wrong with the cadence of the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's at least two or three penalties they've had just trying to get the ball snapped. A reminder that we will be selecting the Very Budweiser the most, most valuable player. Number 34, player. five yards and still first down. Abercrombie guilty of the illegal motion. As you look at the 10-minute ticker, as I was saying, we will be selecting a Budweiser most viable player coming up at the conclusion of this game. Another costly penalty for the Steelers, who mounted a drive on their last possession and wound up in a fumble. And now Jackson and Pollard in the backfield on first and 15. Malone throws a wobbly duck that misses Calvin Sweeney, the intended receiver, by a good seven yards. Albert Lewis was covering, but the pass not well thrown. Bill Moss tries to put pressure up the middle on Mark Malone. He's going up against one of his idols, Mike Webster. Moss being taken care of there. Malone has plenty of time to throw the ball again. He's tracking his receivers, finds one, and simply lets the ball go, and it slips out of his hand or whatever, but it was not a very well-thrown ball. Ouija Thompson into the game and set wide on second and 15 for the Steelers. Jackson. Stop back at the 15-yard line. Bill Moss making the hit for the Kansas City Chiefs. Outstanding play by Bill Moss. Again, he's just following the ball down the line of scrimmage, makes the big hit, picks up the, picks up the tackle. Moss, you see on the right of the screen coming down the line, he just simply beats everyone, gets in there, gets his arms around Jackson and brings him down to the ground. Rodney Carter enters the game. Four wide receivers on third and 16. Five defensive backs for Kansas City. Malone, short on the pass intended for Stallworth coming across the middle. Dino Hackett putting the pressure on Malone, and he unloaded it short. That's one of the problems with Malone. In the press back in Pittsburgh this past week, they talked so much about how he was throwing underneath the receivers, and that's a prime example of what they mean. Bubby Brister sharing time in practice this week with Mark Malone, but Malone got the starting call. Don't be surprised to see Brister in there pretty soon. They've got to get some offense going with the pass. The running game is doing an excellent job, but they need to get the ball downfield passing it, too. Harry Newsom, the punter of the Steelers, having a fine year, and Michael Clemens deep for Kansas City. Newsom standing at his own one-yard line. They put on the pressure, and they partially blocked it. Clemens on the bounce, retreats, and is taken down at the 41-yard line. Michael, he should have stayed away from the football. I think. There was simply no place to run that time. I think he, I think he made a good decision to pick it up. The ball would have rolled 10 to 5 more yards downfield. He stopped it. He didn't pick up any yardage, but they got the ball. Practice. It's fundamental to success, and no one knows it better than Stanley Morgan. At Raytheon, we admire the kind of dedication it takes to catch over 500 balls a day. Because in our own way, we do the same thing in electronics, aviation, appliances, and industry services. Raytheon, 
where quality starts with fundamentals. GMAC makes financing or leasing the new GM car or truck of your dreams easy. Just see your General Motors dealer. We'll help your dream come true. The dreams of sponsor of America's Dreams. I can't breathe. Before and Afrin. Better. What Afrin does in five minutes takes Sudafed over an hour. Blocked. Before and Afrin. Unblocked. It's the number one recommended nasal spray. Whatever happened to real food? You know the kind that just tastes real good. Give me a steak and I won't be blue. I gotta taste for some real food. Beef. Real food for real people. Next Sunday, the NFL plays here when the Jets battle the Chiefs. Before your team takes the field, our team hits the air. NFL Live. Tom Hammond and Michael Jackson in Kansas City with a plane, a plane flying overhead at Arrowhead Stadium. And uh, very appropriately so, because Frank Gans, the former fighter pilot in his first year as the Kansas City Chiefs coach, and uh, we had an interesting conversation with him yesterday. Very engaging personality. I think he ordered that plane to fly over today. I don't think that was the kind of plane he ordered, but he says uh, when he sees those jets, he gets excited. He said a lot of similarities between being a jet pilot and being an NFL head coach. His team right now leading 7-0, 640 first quarter with a first down at the 43 of the Chiefs. Okoya picking his way forward. Bounces off a tackler and takes it to the 46-yard line. David Little makes the stop for Pittsburgh. As you look at the scores, McMahon hit Neil Anderson for a 59-yard touchdown pass in that Bear game. Okoye got three yards on the last play as the Chiefs lead the Steelers 7-0. Just over six minutes left in the first quarter at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. Second and seven, Okoya and Moriarty, the running backs. Okoya got maybe two yards as he's stacked up by the center of the Pittsburgh defense with David Littler, Little, the number one tackler for the Steeders, making the stop. He had 32 tackles coming into today's game. Seventh round draft choice out of Florida and a seven-year veteran. Christian Okoya is a big man to bring down. He weighs 253 pounds, runs a 4.4 40-yard dash. If he gets ahead of steam up, he's going to be hard to bring down today. Third and five, and Bill Kenny still looking for his first completion of the day. He's 0 for 3. Sweeney in motion as Kenny retreats to pass. And completes his first pass for a short gain to Carlos Carson, but well short of the first down. Dwayne Woodruff took Carson down after a short gain. More importantly than that, Bill Kenny got up holding on to that left wrist, which is already in a cast. So they could be in a little bit of trouble right now. You see Stephon Page pointing over at his quarterback there on the sideline. Somebody come and get him. They and he told us yesterday that it hurts to take a snap. It hurts to hand off. Doesn't hurt quite so much to pass, but should he take a blow on it, which he did then, he could be in trouble. Here's Goodburn with the punt for Kansas City. Low line drive kick. Woodson at the 11. Get hard and taken out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Punt covered 40 yards, and Pittsburgh will have it. Jonathan Hayes made the stop for the Chiefs. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League and intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of the telecast without the expressed written consent of the Kansas City Chiefs and the National Football League is prohibited. This game is the property of the National Football League, the Kansas City Chiefs, and the Pittsburgh Steelers, all rights reserved. 7-0, Kansas City leading Pittsburgh, 4.42 left in the first quarter. First down, Steelers at the 23. Abercrombie takes it to the 28-yard line. Bill Kenny takes a hit here. You see him in the middle of your screen there. He gets taken out of the play on the side there. And he's just going to slowly get up. At the top of your screen, Bill Kenny holding it. You know it hurts. It's on the top right, right behind number 76 there. 
You can tell that hurts. Anytime you have a, a fractured wrist and you get hit on it, it's going to hurt a little bit. Second and four, the Steelers. Jackson. Might have been an audible by Malone as you saw the backs reset. The handoff went to Jackson and he got a couple of yards. Aaron Pearson, outside linebacker for the Chiefs, making the stop. Chiefs linebackers have been a problem, as a matter of fact, and Del Rio and Pearson moved outside for better pass coverage as Todd Blackledge loosens up on the sideline and may be coming in for Kenny. This could be an interesting situation right now. Todd Blackledge is uh, warming up, but he's warming up with Sire down on the side of him. So one of the two will be in, it looks like. Frank Sire could be coming in. The coaching staff thinks very highly of him out of Kansas. On the sweep, Jackson. He's got the first down and more. Midfield, out of bounds, at about the 43-yard line of the Chiefs. Albert Lewis made the saving tackle as... Jackson rambled for the first down behind a good block by Abercrombie, 25 yards. He got a good block by Walter Abercrombie, and also they pulled the left guard, Craig Wolfley. He was out leading that block. Number 73 in the middle of your screen there. He comes around the corner, and a big man like that is hard to get around. Opens up the field for Jackson. He just rambles down the field for 25 yards until he's pushed out of bounds. That's what the Steelers want to get going. Not, Noel really likes that. He likes to see his team running up and down the field. Jackson taking a break on the sideline after giving the Steelers a first down. Mark it at the 40 of the Chiefs. Pollard at about three yards before he was thrown back for the center of the Kansas City defense. Kansas City has moved from a 3-4 back to the 4-3 with the addition of Mike Bell this year. And they have had some problems trying to adjust to that. That's why I think they will be vulnerable to the run. Their defense is giving up 379 yards per game, 150 of it on the ground. Number 10 is Frank Sire, who's loosening up on the sideline. He was expected to contend for a starting quarterback job in preseason, but had an auto accident in May, had some severe ligament damage to his left ankle, and just was activated two weeks ago before the San Diego game. On second and six, the Steelers keep it on the ground, and Pollard is stopped at the line of scrimmage by Mike Bell. On that play, Mike Bell lined up at right end, but he was in a two-point stance instead of the three-point stance you normally see the defensive line in. They're shooting the outside linebackers along with Mike Bell or Art Still, and that's how they're closing off that middle. Rodney Carter, Ouija Thompson, John Stallworth, Calvin Sweeney all in the game at wide receivers for the Steelers on third and five. Ball at the 35-yard line of Kansas City. The Chiefs come with six defensive backs. Malone is sacked. Mike Bell gets the sack. Mike Bell lined up again at right end and just bowled over Ray Penny, the left tackle. Comes around there, a lot of strength in that man. He's come back from one heck of a season last year. In fact, he missed last year. Mike Bell, you see him at the top of your screen. Ray Penny, number 65, trying to keep him out of there. Mike Bell just bowls over him and gets to Malone. He just ran right through Penny to get the sack. He's playing with conviction this year. There's Mike Bell. He was away from football over a year, missed all of 86 and the last five games of 85 after his arrest on a drug-related charge. Harry Newsom on to punt for the Steelers on fourth down. Clemens fakes the fair catch and lets it go, and it bounds into the end zone for the touchback. So Kansas City will have the ball first and 10 at the 20. Let's see who reports at quarterback. It's going to be Kenny. Kenny shaking off the injury to his left wrist. You saw him holding it after that last series. So Todd Blackledge remains on the sideline for the Chiefs. Blackledge started the first two games of the season for Kansas City. But after the strike was over and the regular players returned, it was Bill Kenny at the helm for Frank Gans's club. Seven nothing Chiefs with a minute 24 left in the first quarter. Okoya, the lone setback. Okoya, bouncing off tacklers, takes it down to the 28 yard line. The ball came loose, but they're going to rule it down. It'll still be Kansas City's football. Thomas Everett in the secondary for the Steelers stopped Akoya. 
for a big man of 253 pounds, Christian Okoye put on an excellent move right here. You see him in the middle of your screen, stop and cut back to the left, and he picks up about eight yards. The interesting fact is all the carries he's had this year, he's only fumbled two times, and that one cost the game last week against Chicago. As you can see on the replay, the ground clearly caused the fumble, which means it was correctly ruled down, and it's second and two for Kansas City. Okoya takes it across the 30, and if they mark it there, they will. It'll be a Kansas City first down. Donnie Shell up from that strong safety spot making the tackle for Pittsburgh, but not before the rookie Okoya out of Azusa Pacific got the first down yardage. There's going to be a lot of sore bodies waking up tomorrow if they keep running Okoya like they're running him right now. Robin Cole was also in on that. He just got bowled over by Okoya. Okoya was the first chief player to gain over 100 yards in his NFL debut when he gained 105 against San Diego and the Chiefs only law only win uh, so far to open the season <laughs> Kenny he's sacked at the 20 yard line David Little one of the inside linebackers coming on the blitz with Mike Merriweather and they took Kenny down for the loss as the first quarter comes to an end So the defenses have dominated in the first quarter. The Kansas City Chiefs leading 7-0. Never before has an antifreeze guaranteed your radiator. Use new Prestone Advanced Formula after Super Flush and should our protection fail, we'll pay for your radiator repairs. Prestone, the antifreeze that guarantees your radiator. Stanley, we open doors all across America. Doors that open wide. Welcome you inside. And open up to your special day. Doors that get you on your way. Stanley doors for long and nice that bring you in when it's warm and dry. Stanley doors for the quality of your life. Stanley, Stanley helps you do things right. I hate having my picture taken. Since Beaky got the newest totally automatic Nikon One Touch, he hasn't put it down. This Nikon has sharper focus, a really smart, smart flash, even a five-year lithium battery. But the best part is that I got to come here for half price on Pan Am. Buy a One Touch and a companion flies half price on Pan Am, even to Europe. Ooh, Beaky hasn't taken a bad picture of me yet. My dandruff shampoo is good. Better try something else. Mine really works. You'd better try something else, like Selsun Blue. Doctors recommend it more than all of the leading brands. None get rid of dandruff better than Selsun Blue. Kansas City leading Pittsburgh as we get ready for the second quarter. It's 7-0 Chiefs. The only touchdown of the game scored on a defensive play. The defenses have really dominated so far. And, Michael, it appears that uh, Kenny's wrist is bothering him. That could be a factor in the game. Well, it's going to bother him. Anytime you have that fractured wrist, and it, it is on the outside of the left, left wrist, you're going to have a problem with it. If he gets hit again, then you can look to see Sire or Blackledge in there. And you had a look at the cast, the soft cast, worn on the wrist to Bill Kenny, who was sacked on the last play of the first quarter, setting up a second and 21 for the Chiefs. Premature movement by the Chiefs. That'll be five yards illegal procedure. Mark Addicts moved prematurely. And here is that sack that ended the first quarter as Kenny's taking a beating today. You've got basically a seven-man line up there for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Robin Cole, David Little are coming right up the middle. I'm sorry, Merriweather, they're coming up the middle. Nobody's picking them up. First sack of the season will award it to David Little. Mike Merriweather was in there, too. Remember, that's a seldom-seen thing for the Pittsburgh defense. They came into the game with only six sacks, lowest in the NFL. Five yards, still second down. Well, I thought Addicts had pulled back into pass blocking prematurely, but they rule that Pittsburgh was offside. As you look at the first quarter stats, the Steelers have effectively run the ball so far. The Chiefs have not. Steelers with a big edge in total yards, but trailing on the scoreboard, 7-0. 
Getty takes the pass and then hands it to Moriarty. He pounds ahead across the 30 to the 32-yard line where he's tackled by Gerald Williams. That's one of the plays that we saw them running yesterday in practice. Uh, basically a Statue of Liberty he comes back, makes the pass, and hands the ball off to Moriarty up the middle. And as you look at the scores, we check the injured player. It's Walt Arnold, the Kansas City tight end. Seven nothing, the Chiefs leading as we take a timeout for the injury. We'll be back to Arahan in just a moment. Introducing a small sedan made the Mazda way. The new Mazda 323 SE has a bunch of technical sophistication like fuel injection, a roomy interior, lots of standard features, all backed by the best warranty in its class. I'm not kidding. You've got to check out this Mazda 323. Not only because it's today's best small sedan value, but because it's one small car with the solid feel and performance of an expensive road car. This is the Mazda Way. Radio Shack's sale price Tandy 1000 TX brings the gift of a true high-speed business computer to your home affordably. PC compatible, easy to use, with seven ready-to-run programs for the family. Keep a budget, write term papers, even create graphics or learn music. Save $250 on the high-speed Tandy 1000TX, color monitor included, only $12.49. Tandy computers, because there is no better gift value. Only at Radio Shack. The Great American Face. Rugged. Distinctive. The Great American Razor. Atra. Solid. Pivots for closeness. The Great American Face deserves the Great American Shave. Atra. Only from Gillette. Hi there. You looking for Mr. Wright? Give this guy a light. Wow. And Bud Light here. Ooh. Ask for Bud Light. The light beer with the first name and taste. Because everything else is just a light. Thanks. Keep the chains. Today's game is brought to you by Mazda. Bringing performance and value together. That's the Mazda way. By Nikon, we take the world's greatest pictures. And by Tandy Computers, because there is no better value, only at Radio Shack. Tom Hammond and Michael Jackson, Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, where Walt Arnold, the Chiefs tight end, is on the ground being tended to. Can you see what happened, Michael, as we look at the replay? Well, he's got his position on the right-hand side of your screen there. And basically, I think what happens, he just gets run over. He gets pushed back into the middle and gets the knee collapsed the knee or ankle he falls down and hopefully it's not too bad I can't really tell what happened on that replay Arnold number 87 as you saw maybe had the legs taken out from under him and is it, being helped onto a cart now to be taken from the field anytime you're standing up in the middle of a crowd there like he was with uh, Brian Hinkle you have that chance or you stand that chance of being run over by one of your own men and that I think that's what happened his old man ran over his ankle or his knee Walt Arnold, the eight-year veteran out of New Mexico. Doesn't seem to be in too much pain, but then again, we're up here and he's down there. Maybe you'll be able to see something here. 53's got a hold of number 87, Arnold, and you see right there at the bottom of your screen, his knee looked like it did cave in just a bit, and in fact, quite a bit. And that may be something, uh, that may be what happened to him. Arnold leaving with that inflatable cast, I suppose it is, holding it rigid. Do you see his right leg with that brace or inflatable cast on it? Third and 11 for Kansas City. Kenny goes deep. He's got Carson. Carlos Carson beating Thomas Everett on the play for a Chief first down as Kenny and Carson, that favorite passing combination of the Chiefs, hook up for 39 yards. Well, Kenny has plenty of time again to throw the ball. And what's going on, Carl Carson's running just a post pattern down the middle of the field. There's two safeties back there, but nobody's in position to knock the ball away. And a nice play by Carlos Carson there. Walt Arnold, we're told, has a sprained knee and will be out for the rest of the game. On first down, Christian Okoya fighting for yardage. David Little not yielding much in that Pittsburgh defense. 
That was a nice hit by David Little. He stepped right in there and played the ball the way you're supposed to play it, the hard and tough way. Got his shoulder pads in there and brought him down. And an official's timeout as Christian Okoya a little bit shaken up. Well, he's been beat up for this season. The Seahawks beat him up pretty bad in the first game that they played in Seattle. And he, he had a shoulder. He's had thumbnails or something done. And knee last week, I guess. So he's pretty beat up. See the rushing yardage today with the Steelers having a big edge. And Christian Okoya, the Chiefs' top rusher, being shaken up on that last play. The rookie, a native of Nigeria, went to Azusa Pacific. He's only played football about three seasons, still very much learning the game, but he is going to be a great one. He will be. His teammates, some of them, call him the Nigerian Nightmare. Second and nine for Kansas City at the 29 of the Steelers. Palmer and Moriarty, the running backs now. In motion, Hayes, who replaced Arnold at tight end. Palmer gets only a couple of yards. Robin Cole, inside linebacker, the veteran former first-round draft choice, making the tackle for Pittsburgh. There's a look at a coy over on the bench. He may have a thigh bruise, or maybe even that shoulder injury has started to react again. Or whatever, you know they want to get him back in the game. They just don't seem to be the same running without him. Koya, seven carries for 27 yards. At game 272 coming into the game, the leading rookie rusher in the NFL. Third and seven for the Chiefs. <laughs> Kenny under pressure. Finds his man, Hayes, who takes it to the Bell yard line. Looks about the 12 or perhaps the 11. Thomas Everts again making the stop for Pittsburgh as Jonathan Hayes makes a 15-yard reception. That time, Rod Woodson came over and lined up on him in the nickel position. Kenny drops back and just dumps the ball over the middle. Jonathan Hayes got around Rod Woodson and picked up the first down. But it was interesting that time to see Woodson come up and try to jam. The, the only reason he was open is Woodson missed the jam. You can't do that in man-to-man -man coverage. Woodson getting his feet wet in his first game for the Steelers. Their top round draft choice. Beaten that time. First down up to 12. Kenny incomplete intended for Hayes. Good coverage by the linebacker Brian Hinkle that time. Check the other scores now around the NFL. And Green Bay with a two-yard run by Brent Fullwood. The rookie has taken a 14-7 lead over the Bears. Remember last week, Kansas City leading virtually the entire way against Chicago before faltering in the fourth quarter. Christian Okoye shaken up for Kansas City, has injured his shoulder, a strained shoulder. He may not be back. Second and ten. Hand off to Moriarty. He gets nothing. Keith Gary making the stop for Pittsburgh. Kansas City seems to like that faking the pass and then hand the ball off behind or in front and, and let the running back find a hole somewhere. But that time there was no hole. Keith Gary was there to make sure of that. There you see Christian Okoye again. He's just... Uh, indicating to the coach that he was trying to deliver a forearm and maybe that's how he hurt his shoulder again. Third and ten coming up for Kansas City. Remember the defense has scored the only touchdown of the game. It's 7-0 Chiefs. Kenny, plenty of time. Flag down. Touchdown. Stephon Page made the reception and crawled into the end zone, but there is a flag on the play. And it will be a holding against Kansas City, and that will nullify the touchdown. Well, with that much time, you've got to figure that there's going to be holding somewhere ineligible downfield. First he said uh, holding, did Jim Tunney, and then he says ineligible receiver downfield. Well, they had so much time, maybe one of the linemen thought he'd get down there. Watch this time that he's got. He's just sitting in the pocket. He's not got nervous feet. He finds four or five receivers and finally gives the ball to Page, and he crawls his way into the end zone. Nice effort there. Unfortunately, it's going to be called back. There are two fouls. Holding number 72 is accepted. And as a player downfield is declined. It'll still be third down. 
So two penalties on the play in eligible downfield and a hold on David Lutz, number 72. I don't see the holding, not from that replay there. I just didn't see the holding. The ineligible, maybe that was there. But that's a nice effort by Stephon Page to get into the end zone. Third and 20 now for Kansas City as Rod Woodson, the rookie, comes in in the nickel package for the Steelers. Edmund Nelson is also in as they rush with four on third and 20. Intercepted by Thomas Everett, intended for Paul Kaufman, and Everett timed it perfectly for his first interception of the season. The rookie out of Baylor. And that's a second turnover for Kansas City. There was a penalty on the play against Kansas City. It'll be declined. Kaufman's going to go down and run a corner route. Just means you're going to go into the corner. Thomas Everett times it just perfectly, perfectly with one hand. Runs out of bounds. Gives the ball to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Recognize potential. We develop it. We use it. We'll make sure that as your responsibility grows, so will you. As your ability for leadership grows, so will you. Working with us, you'll gain self-confidence. Become a person with a future. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Marines. The Army. The Navy. The Air Force. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. So they sent you down to check up on me. Who am I to check up on you? So how's it coming? I don't know. You tell me. Where'd you get all this? I keep telling you guys, the worst place to get any work done is at work. But you're all alone here. I mean, no secretary, no production department, no nothing. Oh, I wouldn't exactly say nothing. Americans buy lots of imported cars. Isn't it nice to know that Napa has the parts right here when you need them? Don't miss the boat on parts for imports. Come to Napa. Don't look up, says who? Why well, I'll look up if I... I got you now, chicken. How many times do I gotta tell you, son? Go to Kentucky Fried Chicken. It's finger looking good. We do chicken right. Birdie. Tom Hammond and Michael Jackson in Kansas City where the Steeler defense has just picked off its 17th pass of the season. Bill Kenny comes back. He's throwing a timing route. It looks like he gets back there, plants, and throws the ball, but it's picked off by Thomas Everett. His first of the year, and here's his reaction to that. This is the sixth game with at least two interceptions for the Steelers this year. They have it at their own 10. Ernest Jackson takes it just shy of the 15-yard line. They got about four. Aaron Pearson takes him to the turf at that point. We've had a pretty exciting game between the 10s on both sides of the field right now. Nobody seems to be able to get into the, into the end zone except for the defense of the, of the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, the defenses are making the big plays today. That's something you as a former linebacker must enjoy. I love it. Gotta love this game. Jackson, the leading rusher in the NFL, held in check the last two games, but off to a good start here today. He got four on that last one at second and six. Malone completes it to Stallworth. And the Steelers have a first down. J.C. Pearson hanging on to Stallworth. But the Steelers, starting at their own 10, have now advanced it out to their 27-yard line. That's a nice, safe pass for Malone. He's throwing to a veteran working up against J.C. Pearson, a second-year guy out of Washington. And he needs some passes like that just to get the confidence level going for him. Like I said, he's throwing a completion ratio of 42%. But that's not very good. Spot the ball at the 27, make it first and 10 for the Steelers, who trail Kansas City 7-0. Nine minutes, 15 seconds left in the first half. Malone's pass, again, complete to Stallworth. J.C. Pearson made the catch. The fans thought he might have trapped it. I thought he trapped that ball. It looked like he short-hopped it. 
It'll go, though, for 13 yards and a Steeler first down, as Malone checks and says, is it good? They say yes, although they may be looking at it in the replay booth. Malone having a good start in this game, four of his first seven. That reaction you hear is to the crowd watching Diamond Vision. Uh, they think that the ball was trapped. Hard to tell from that angle. Looks like it might have been good. I thought it was a good catch. First down for Pittsburgh at the 40. Pitch to Abercrombie. Good running room. Takes it to the 45-yard line to the 47, where Dino Hackett nudges him out of bounds. Abercrombie was the leading rusher last week for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he's starting off very well again today here. Craig Wolfley that time opened the corner for, for Abercrombie. He got out and blocked Mike Bell, knocked him off his feet, got him that corner. Let's pause now briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. You're watching Channel 11, WPXI-TV, Pittsburgh. Second and three for the Steelers. 7-0 Kansas City leads. Ernest Jackson with a big hole up the middle takes it into Kansas City territory. And he's down to about the 43-yard line where Deron Cherry and Lloyd Burris, the safeties, have to make the saving tackle. For the Pittsburgh fans, this has got to be a totally different game than last week. This is such a quick hitting trap right up the middle. Ernest Jackson gets it, gets good blocking, and just breaks it for about seven, eight yards that time. But they have got to be pleased with what's going on today as opposed to last week. He said at the start of the telecast that the Steelers had to get their running game going, and they are doing that. First down at the 43 of Kansas City. Play action pass. Malone scrambles and then throws the pass for Ouija Thompson. And he makes the catch. I thought that it might have hit the carpet, but he made a great catch. He got those long arms down there. He picked that up right before it hit the ground. But again, it was not a very well-thrown ball by Mark, by Mark Malone. He gets the completion, and that's one of the things that the, the people have been harping on back in Pittsburgh. He rolls out here, gets pressure, throws the ball. It's a little bit low. Ouija Thompson makes an excellent grab of it, though. He did indeed make a, a nice catch. At 6'6", he's the tallest wide receiver in the NFL to use those long arms to good advantage to pluck it right off the turf. First down at the 33. Steelers on the move. This drive began at the 10. Jackson. Strong running by Ernest Jackson who twists and turns his way for a first down. J.C. Pearson able to wrestle him to the turf but just barely. They're getting a lot of good blocks in front of Ernest Jackson. I think a lot of that has to do with Wolfley right there pulling out Abercrombie, you see, leading the way. And the rest of it just done on his own. He runs over a man here and spins, turns, twists, and picks up the first down. Cocroft getting a piece of the tackle is Lloyd Burris, the Pro Bowl strong safety of the Chiefs, shaken up on the play and replaced by Mark Robinson. First down at the 21. Going with an audible, it seems. Malone across the middle, intended for Stallworth, but short. Deron Cherry was right there on the coverage. There have been some passes completed against the Chiefs this year, but most of them have been underneath. That great secondary covers well deep, but it's the linebackers on the underneath coverage that have been the problem. That's the weakness of the Chiefs' defense overall. Their front four does an outstanding job. Their defensive secondary also the same. Their linebackers are spotty, though. Second and ten coming up from the Steelers, who trail the Kansas City Chiefs seven nothing. Six minutes nine seconds left in the first half in Kansas City. Drive so far has covered 69 yards. This is the ninth play, and it's a handoff. Pollard was hit. It was Abercrombie he was hit as soon as he got the football. It was taken down for a loss. There is a penalty flag down. Art Still and Jack Del Rio strong against the run that time. And there will be a holding call against Pittsburgh. We saw this happen in the first quarter. They had a good drive going, then a penalty and a fumble took them out of any chance for points. Well, you can never play successful football and give the ball up, number one, and have penalties that stop a drive, number two. And that's exactly what's been happening out here today. Already 40 yards and penalties against Chuck Miller. Holding, 73 offense, 10 yards, still second down. Craig Wolfley is guilty of the hold. There he is, number 73, the eight-year veteran out of Syracuse. Simply giving the ball away. You see, 
there's such a technical way they're calling holding. Wolfie number 73 was pushing his man out of the way and they called him a hold. Second and 20. Malone hangs it up. And a diving interception by Duran Cherry. They're going to bring that one back. There is a penalty play. Malone did a great job of getting rid of that ball. He hung it up there. And there was contact while the ball was in the air. Art still was putting the pressure on Mark Malone. Frank Gans perhaps will see this interception waved off. Deron Cherry still on the turf after making the diving interception. It was a nice effort, but it's going to go for naught. As we pointed out, the Chiefs only was six interceptions, second lowest in the NFL. That would have been seven, but the penalty against Kansas City will wipe it out. Malone gets rid of the ball. He's got a lot of heat coming up the middle and outside. Pass interference, defense, number 29, third early, first down. Albert Lewis, number 29, guilty of the pass interference. So Kansas City, instead of having the football, We'll see Pittsburgh in possession at the Chief 21-yard line. It's a first down for Pittsburgh. There's Lewis, who committed the pass interference. Jackson to the 10-yard line. Dino Hackett stopped Jackson, but once he got that head of steam going, he was tough to bring down. I believe Chuck Noll did shake up his ball carriers with a little criticism after the Miami game a week ago. They're running much harder today. I'm almost positive he did. They're running a different type of trap than they ran last, last week. They're running a delayed counter trap, which gives the ball carrier more time to see where the hole's going to be. He's picking the hole just beautifully today. First and goal, the ball just inside the 10. Pollard to the five-yard line. Dino Hackett, leading tackler for the Kansas City Chiefs, joined by Aaron Pearson and combining on the hit. It'll be second and goal coming up for the Steelers. Now inside five minutes left in the first half. Steelers looking for a touchdown and an extra point to tie it up. Mark the ball at about the five-yard line. Jackson again. He's hit at the line of scrimmage and dropped, and it was Aaron Pearson that came with a rush for Kansas City. He hit Jackson the minute he got the handoff, stopped him in his tracks. He sure did. Jackson gets the ball, and Aaron Pearson's coming through the middle of your screen right there. Nice form tackle there. Pushes him back, and then the troops come to the rescue and brings him down. One Third. Of, that's one of the reasons they got Aaron Pearson in there, as he's a big hitter, too, as well as a nice pass coverage man. Third and goal from the four-yard line. 13th final drive as we approach the four-minute mark. For the end zone. Touchdown. Rodney Carter makes the grab for the Steelers as Malone hit him in the corner of the end zone where he had eluded Burris and Lewis. That's one of the finest passes that I've seen Malone throw in quite a while. He threaded the needle that time. Rodney Carter picked it off right in the middle of the air in front of two defenders for the six points. He kind of forces this ball, and nobody says you can't do that as long as you get it there. Rodney Carter made an excellent play on the ball. Carter almost did a 360, turning around to get it, but he got the touchdown, and the extra point by Gary Anderson is good. He's hit 163 in a row, and we've got a 7-7 game with 3.59 left in the second. Memo to Phil and DP. Have we lost our minds? Our friends on the sixth floor want to get their hands on 386 PCs as soon as possible, and I agree. My question is, why do we automatically assume that means IBM? Now we have a choice. I suggest you look at AT&T. The AT&T 6386 works with the PCs we already have, and we can run the same programs we're running now. 
The issue here isn't just computers and software, but it's keeping our options open, now and down the road. Introducing the AT&T 6386 workgroup system. And now I think we know that AT&T is on our side in the long run. That's it. See that that goes out today, Marianne. High-performance luxury sedans traditionally ask you to pay a pretty dear price. Well, that's not the Mazda way. Mazda's all-new 929 has world-class luxury appointments. It's amazingly quiet, solid riding, and actually outperforms those guys. Now there's less standing between you and a car this good. About $8,000 less. A better luxury car value like this comes from our intense commitment to your total satisfaction. That's the Mazda way. Experienced, comprehensive, insightful, innovative, informative, dependable, responsive, fast, accurate, fair, clear. Tom Brokaw and the NBC Nightly News. Pittsburgh Steelers with a beautifully executed drive have tied it 7-7 with 3 minutes 59 seconds left in the second quarter of this game in Kansas City. Don't forget, coming up at halftime on NFL Live, we'll bring you up to date on all the scores and highlights from around the league. Also, an interview with Gordy Lockbaum, the Heisman Trophy candidate from Holy Cross. Plays both offense and defense with the Crusaders. He'll be the featured guest at halftime on NFL Live. Anderson with a kickoff for Pittsburgh. Paul Palmer takes it one yard deep in the end zone. Palmer hit and dropped short of the 20-yard line at about the 17 by Thomas Everett, who's having a big game for the Steelers. Let's take a look again at the touchdown pass. Mark Malone. He gets nice time here. He's going to throw a ball to Rodney Carter. Rodney Carter makes an excellent play. He almost does, like Tom said, a 360 for the touchdown pass. In defense of Malone, nobody said your passes had to be pretty. They just had to be effective, and that one was. Christian Okoya back into the game for Kansas City, shaking off that strained shoulder and getting the pitch there. He's hit hard. He got a couple of yards on his forward progress. Dwayne Woodruff came up from that quarterback spot and popped him pretty good. And Keith Willis then pounced on for the kill. Well, Keith Willis was in the backfield before Okoya got going good. He pushed his man all the way back in there and disrupted the path of Christian Okoya that time. Clock ticking down inside three and a half minutes, a 7-7 game in Kansas City. Rod Woodson, the rookie, in for the Steelers now on their nickel coverage. It's second and eight. Kenny will put it up. Deflected at the line of scrimmage, it goes incomplete. Mike Merriweather getting a hand up to knock the ball loose. That was, and it falls incomplete. That was simply just a lack of protection there or a lack of concentration on Bill Kenny's behalf. The ball looked like it was a little bit low being thrown. Indianapolis with a couple of field goals leading. Green Bay's lead reduced to four. As you see the other scores. Third and eight coming up for the Chiefs. but nobody was there. In fact, it went to the Pittsburgh sideline. And a mix-up apparently on the pass routes of his receivers. He went deep down the sideline. No one even close to the ball. Yeah, I think they, the receivers saw a blitz or something coming up the middle. And they adjusted their route and Kenny didn't pick it up or some miscommunication of some sort happened there. Fourth down and a punting situation for Frank Gans and his Chiefs. Kelly Goodburn is on in punt formation. There's Goodburn. And Rod Woodson is deep for the Steelers. Low snap. Goodburn gets it away. Woodson hit. He managed to hold on to the football, but Sherman Cocroft got there the same time as the football and stopped Woodson in his tracks. A 48-yard punt with no return. Sherman Cocroft was with the Seattle Seahawks for a year that I was there. Played very well on special teams there as well. 
You see him get down. He times his hit just perfectly, so Woodson gets his two yards to catch the ball. Then he makes a legal hit. Very exciting play for him. Woodson's had a pretty a tough welcome to the NFL today. A couple of pretty good hits on him and beaten once in pass coverage. From the 33, Steeders with a first down. Abercrombie. Good running by Abercrombie. Got about nine yards across the 40 where Mike Bell takes him down. Abercrombie was just one step away from breaking that. Mike Bell made a touchdown saving tackle just then. He was up in a three point in a two point stance again. You'll see him come from the right of your screen and make a diving save there because Abercrombie did have blocking in front of him. A little bit of a counter. They faked it to Jackson, gave it to Abercrombie. And they've got a second and one. Jackson has the first down stopped at the 45 yard line by Art Still. Approaching the two minute warning here at Kansas City. This is exactly what Chuck Mellon wanted to do. He wanted to get his team running the ball well, keep them in the game, and use up that clock. He's not big on long plays or fast touchdowns. We've got the two minute warning in Kansas City. The Steelers and the Chiefs tied 7 7. Ronald Light's here. Ask for Bud Light. A light beer with a first name and taste. Let me know when you're ready for another round. Because everything else is just the light. <laughs> Introducing a family sedan made the Mazda way. Toyota Camry, Honda Accord, and Mazda 626 are all great family sedans, but the 626 is really something special. For starters, it has a better warranty, much better. 12% more interior room than Camry and Accord. Plus, it's close to $1,000 less. And if all that's not special enough for you, just wait till you drive this world-class road car. This is the Mazda way. They are called Olympic hopefuls, but hope plays a small role here. For it will take a courage, a discipline, and a sheer will few of us will ever know. And if their effort is true, then they too will be known as Olympians. Tom Hammond and Michael Jackson again at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. 7-7 game, and the Steelers' rushing game back in gear today. 156 yards so far in the first half. In the first half a week ago against Miami, they had only 65 yards, wound up with 97 for the game. That uh, running game back in high gear. Well, they've got it back in high gear, and that's exactly what Chuck Noll wants. You know, their, their rushing average per game is 139, and they've already exceeded that in the first half. Eight first downs in that last drive and 13 for the game. The only Kansas City score, remember, came from their defense. Here's Malone. Goes into double coverage, and it's picked off by Cherry. Deron Cherry picking up blockers at the 45, down to the 38 of Pittsburgh. Bad decision by Malone. Deron Cherry with the interception. He returns it 31 yards. That's his third interception of the season. He leads the Chiefs. Well, it was a bad decision by Malone to throw. He gets a little pressure from Mike Bell there. He lets the ball go, and he's throwing again into double coverage. You see three men there, but he's throwing into double coverage. Deron Cherry has no, no choice or no problem picking that one off. He makes a nice little run at the end there, too. Gets down below those big guys so he doesn't get hit too hard. Mark Malone after throwing the interception, and Cherry picking off his third of the season. First down at the 39 of Pittsburgh. A minute 48 left in the half. Kenny's pass wide open. Complete to Carson, who takes it to the 25-yard line. 14 yards and a cheap first down as the clock approaches a minute 30. It looked like Bill Kenny wanted to throw the ball. And the Chiefs take a timeout. We'll be right back. Each day in the United States, 71 people are killed in accidents involving drinking and driving. More than 25,000 lives are lost each year.
Here it's too late, not just for the driver who was drinking, but for those who weren't. I'm Gary Anderson of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and what you're seeing here is happening too often on our highways. The message is simple. Don't drink and drive. And if you drink, designate a non-drinker to do the driving. Give the keys to someone that everyone can trust and arrive alive. These are the important messages the National Football League and the United Way and its agencies and programs are trying to get across. Now you can be part of the team. Don't drink and drive. The United Way, it brings out the best in all of us. This message furnished by the National Football League. Mark Malone having just thrown an interception for the Steeders, and the Chiefs have it with a first down at the 25 of Pittsburgh. Pass is complete to Moriarty, who's taken down at the 30 for a loss on the play. Brian Hinkle smelled that one from the outset, and Moriarty never had a chance. That looked like the twin of the last play they ran right before the timeout. Kenny looked like he was trying to flare the ball out to the left side and threw downfield to Carson instead. This time he made the wrong decision. Chiefs with two timeouts left as we approach the one-minute mark. Here's that interception by Malone. Malone. In the double coverage, Cherry picks it off. He just kind of floats that ball out there. It was a bad decision to make, make that throw. Second and 14. Kenny across the middle complete to Kaufman for a short gain to the 25. He's immediately stopped by Robin Cole. And Kansas City takes its second timeout, stopping the clock with 42 seconds. There's Duran Cherry, 34 career interceptions for the Pro Bowl man, who is in his seventh year out of Rutgers. He's been to four straight Pro Bowls. He's also good against the run. In fact, he's had over 100 tackles for four straight years. Stay with us now at halftime. NFL Live will bring you up to date on scores and highlights with Bob Costas, Ahmad Rashad, Paul McGuire, Frank DeFord, and also what should be an interesting interview with Gordy Lockbaum. I'd love to see him win the Heisman Trophy. Had a Holy Cross, a two-way player. It'd be an outside shot, but he is certainly an interesting story in college football. That's coming up at halftime on NFL Live. This man, Bill Kinney, has an interesting problem on his hand right now. He's thrown two interceptions, no touchdowns. He likes to go to Carlos Carson and Stephon Page down here. And with third down, nine to go from the 25. And there's less than a minute left. He's got to go into the end zone this time. They've got to go for the touchdown. Kansas City has converted only two of six third downs in the first half. This one is third and ten. He pumped once, and that would have float out of bounds. I tell you, that was just an ugly pass there. I don't know who he was throwing that to. And so as Malone feels the booze at Three Rivers, Kenny hears them here at Arrowhead. And Nick Lowry is on to attempt a field goal. Lowry, the third leading all-time field goal accuracy man in the NFL, 76.2%. He trails Gary Anderson of the Steelers and Morton Anderson of the Saints. There you see the figures. We're seeing two of the best in action here today. Anderson of the Steelers and Lowry of the Chiefs, who lines up for a 42-yard attempt. Sire is the holder. It's good. Nick Lowry with the field goal, officially 41 yards, gives Kansas City the lead. Perfect snap, perfect hold, perfect kick. The Kansas City Chiefs have scored 34 points in the last two games against the Pittsburgh Steelers, and their offense has yet to score a touchdown. In the last game of the season a year ago at Three Rivers Stadium, the special teams and the field goal kickers getting all the points as the Chiefs made it to the playoffs for the first time in 15 years. Today, a fumble recovery for a touchdown and Lowry's field goal, the 10 points for Frank Gans and the Chiefs. What a reminder, November 21st from Hollywood Park, America's Day at the Races, the richest day in all of racing, the Breeders' Cup. It's the Super Bowl of horse racing. Seven races worth $10 million. I'll be there that day. Bob Levy, our director today, will also be on hand. 
Should be an exciting four hours of coverage up for grabs. In addition to the $10 million, the Horse of the Year title. November 21st, the Breeders' Cup. Don't you have a horse running in that time? I wish I did. I wish I had one <laughs> that could run for a million dollars. I'll just be watching. Nick Lowry will tee it up for the Kansas City Chiefs. Woodson and Stone are deep for Pittsburgh. Here's Woodson. Good return that time by Rod Woodson, who takes it across the 20 to the 22, where he's hit by James Harrell. Harrell just activated today, one of the replacement players, sitting up with the regulars for the first time, one of two replacement players on the Kansas City team. They picked him up from Detroit, I believe, and he's the oldest linebacker on this Kansas City Chief team with eight years' experience in the league. 26 seconds left in the first half. Pittsburgh, after the interception, leading to the field goal, now down by three. I think they'll keep the ball on the ground for the next 26 seconds. Let's Just see what happens. Prevent defense in for Kansas City. They have four defensive backs 20 yards away from the ball. Abercrombie gets the handoff. They keep him in bounds and stop him after a gain of six. Sherman Cocroft led the charge. Pittsburgh stops the clock with a timeout. 19 seconds left. Abercrombie, 60 yards in the first half. On that run right there, he looked a lot like Franco Harris, who, of course, was with the Steelers, and he came to the Seahawks for uh, half a season. But that run right there reminded me a lot, personally, of Franco Harris's move. The day began with bright sunshine and warm temperatures here in Kansas City, but the clouds have come in and kind of getting chilly. Abercrombie comes out of the backfield holding that ball in two hands, and Franco used to do that a lot with the Seattle Seahawks. He comes out, and he's holding it in two hands. He's going to put a stiff arm on somebody that's second to none right there, just pushes him straight down to the ground. I think that's Dino Hackett. Who were the uh, running backs you played against that were the toughest, the most punishing runners as far as stiff arms or lowering that shoulder into you? Well, there's probably three of them. Number one was Chuck Muncie. Number two, Walter Payton. And number three, John Riggins. Not necessarily in that order, but those three guys were the hardest running people I've ever had to bring down. In fact, I think that some of them are still running. I didn't bring them down good enough. Pittsburgh Steelers trailing by three. 19 seconds left. Second and one at their own 31-yard line. Six defensive backs in for the Chiefs. And the Steelers keep it on the ground again to Abercrombie. Dino Hackett makes the stop, but Abercrombie has the first down. And the Steelers stop it again with their second timeout. And 15 seconds are left. I think what they're trying to do is get the ball down close to the 50-yard line and then go deep. They've got one timeout with 15 seconds left. They may be trying to set up another touchdown. Chuck Noll, the master at winning. You see there, third on the, on the list of winning coaches. You can bet he's got some... Uh, some tricks up his sleeves for trying to get in the end zone for this position. 174 victories, 117 losses, and a tie in 19 years as a head coach. In fact, uh, counting his years as a player and an assistant, he's been in the NFL 35 years. Haven't even been alive 35 years. <laughs> Let alone be in one sport that long. He's had a nice career, though. Very nice. First and 10 for Knowles Steelers. 15 ticks of the clock remaining in the first half. Malone's pass deflected, it goes incomplete. Hart still at 6-7, got a big paw in the face of Malone and knocked it down. There's still the former All-American at the University of Kentucky. First round draft choice, been to the Pro Bowl four times. Had a great game a week ago against the Bears. Sometimes you just have to keep those arms down no matter what it takes. If it takes cutting the guy's knees out or what. Still has those long arms at 6'7". He can get the ball up. He can get up there and knock maybe Abdul-Jabbar shot down. That time he got Malone. He was a pretty good basketball player, as a matter of fact. And his sister is the all-time leading scorer in Kentucky. Malone's pass. Incomplete. Ruled incomplete. Intended for Calvin Sweeney. And he short hopped it. It hit the turf first. Lloyd Burris was covering Sweeney on the play. Malone seems to be coming maybe three-quarter to sidearm with the ball and not coming over the top hard enough. He seems to be just floating the ball out there. 
Gaines is hollering something out there. He wants to get a chance of blocking a punt. You can bet. He used to be the special teams coach here. And I bet if they run the ball or if they stop the ball, stop the clock with any time left, they're going to go for a block punt. So the figures on Malone, the interception leading to the go-ahead field goal by Kansas City. Abercrombie out of the backfield. Got some running room into Chief Territory to the 48-yard line, but time runs out. So the Steelers mounting a little drive toward the end of the half, but not getting any points out of it. It installs at the 48-yard line of Kansas City as the first half runs out. Chuck Noll with a smile on his face. His team certainly has played better in the first half in the running department. The running game has been potent, and only the interception by Malone has prevented them from going into the locker room with a tie at halftime. It's 10-7 Kansas City as the defense is really predominating in the first half. The defenses are playing well for both teams. The offense for Kansas City has yet to assert itself. And as you said, Pittsburgh's running the ball. That's what they like to do. Chuck Knowles very happy going in, down by three. They come back out and start all over again. This is the type of game he likes to play. All right, at halftime, the Kansas City Chiefs leading the Pittsburgh Steelers by a 10-7 count at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. They were Beverly Hills rich kids out to make a killing. They went crazy. And they turned the American dream into a nightmare. Kids just don't do this. People Magazine hailed it as a miniseries you'll really love. TV Guide found it chilling and absorbing, and the Daily News called it first rate. It was a perfect crime. Based on a true story, Billionaire Boys Club tonight. Jeep designed Cherokee to give you more than any other vehicle of its kind. Like a choice of two or four doors. Room for five adults. And now you can get Cherokee with an optional four-liter six-cylinder engine that has more power, a lot more power than anything in its class. But Cherokee's biggest advantage is one that can't be measured by mere numbers. Cherokee is all Jeep. Bell of Pennsylvania operators. They listen, they help, and they care. Oh, operator, I need my mom now. Okay, honey, just tell me what's wrong. It's Betty. She's in a lot of pain. She's moaning, and I'm scared. Okay, now I'll get you in the ambulance. For Betty? Oh, now, who's Betty? Betty's our dog, and she's having a puppy. We'll get your mom right away. Signature service from Bell of Pennsylvania. Taxi, tonight at 11.30, here on Channel 11. Halftime in Kansas City, the Chiefs leading the Steelers 10-7. Kansas City getting a fumble recovery by Bill Moss for a touchdown and a Nick Lowry field goal. Mark Malone to Rodney Carter for the Steelers score. 10-7, the Chiefs. Now let's go to New York. Bob Costas at NFL Live. We welcome those of you watching games in Minnesota and Kansas City. Bob Costas back at our NFL Live studios in New York. Let's get you updated on what's happening elsewhere. Indianapolis leading San Diego at the Hoosier Dome 13 to nothing. Eric Dickerson has carried 24 times in the first half. Ron Meyer has that feature back he wants. 24 carries for 103 yards. But keep this in mind. He's also got Albert Bentley. So he's got a Rolls-Royce on the field in Dickerson and a Bentley in the garage. And Bentley ran eight yards for a touchdown in the second quarter. He had well over 100 last week against the Jets. Maybe the Colts are for real. 13-0 over the Chargers. Green Bay leads Chicago 14-13. On the first play from scrimmage for the Bears, Jim McMahon threw a 59-yard touchdown pass to Neil Anderson. After that, the Packers took control. Buffalo just got another touchdown, and they've upped their lead at home over Denver. This one is surprising to 16-0. A look at some of the highlights from that game as Marv Levy's Bills try and even their record at 4-4. Four and four. This is a second quarter drive. No score in the game at this point. Jim Kelly hands to Rob Riddick. Then Kelly slips out to the left and takes the pass. And when it's all over, the play has covered 34 yards and it's set up the first Buffalo touchdown. A more conventional play here. Out of the shotgun, it's Kelly to Andre Reed, 9-yard TD and a 7-0 lead. Rob Riddick then blocked the Denver punt. It rolled out of the end zone, good for a safety and a 9-0 advantage. Buffalo just got another TD and they're ahead of the Broncos, 16-0. Minnesota playing at home and leading at the Metrodome at the half, 
seven to three over the Raiders. Tommy Kramer starting this game at quarterback for the Vikes in place of Wade Wilson, who had been slumping badly. Kramer with a one-yard touchdown run on fourth and goal in the second quarter to give the Vikings their advantage. The Raiders twice had first and goal. Once they were stopped on downs and gave the ball up without scoring at all, and once they settled for a 21-yard Chris Barr field goal. In the first half, Marcus Allen with nine carries for 40 yards. Bo Jackson at last check, two carries, good for seven yards. Washington playing at Philadelphia, and the Redskins leading the Eagles 21-7. Darrell Green just returned an Eagle fumble for a Redskin touchdown. Earlier, George Rogers had scored from the three, and Jay Schrader threw a 19-yard scoring pass to Art Monk. Pittsburgh at Kansas City. That one goes to the half at Arrowhead, with the Chiefs trying to snap a six-game losing streak. That, of course, includes 0-3 by the replacement squad, and they're in front of Chuck Noll Steelers, 10-7. Pick it up in the first quarter. Mark Malone dropping the pass for Pittsburgh. Hit by Jack Del Rio from the blind side. The ball coughed up. Bill Moss falls on it. Tumbles into the end zone. Six-yard scoring play and a 7-0 lead. Malone gets the Steelers even early in the second quarter. Rodney Carter on the receiving end of the four-yard pass. Malone entered the day as the lowest-rated quarterback in the NFL. The margin now in the game, a 41-yard field goal by Nick Lowry of the Chiefs for the 10-7 lead. Cleveland at home and at the half, they lead the Falcons 14-3. How in the world could this have happened? The Falcons took the opening kickoff and kept the ball for 10 minutes and 12 seconds and then punted from the Browns 43. Kevin Mack has a one-yard scoring run for Cleveland and Bernie Kosar a 54-yard touchdown pass to Webster Slaughter. Tampa Bay at St. Louis. The Buccaneers with a 14-3 lead at the half at Bush Stadium on a pair of Steve DeBerg touchdown passes. When we come back, Gordon Lockbaum will be the subject of Frank DeFord's halftime essay. Lockbaum, of course, the Heisman Trophy candidate, two-way player from Holy Cross. Stay with us as NFL Live continues. From royalty to movie stars, Barbara Hutton's lifestyle shocked the world. You're making a spectacle of yourself. My humiliation is to be their entertainment. Farrah Fawcett stars as the woman who could buy anything but love. You know how I feel? Worth millions. Worth nothing. Based on a true story, Poor Little Rich Girl, beginning November 16th. A special Truck Bonus Days report from your world-class Ford dealers. When you buy with a five-speed manual transmission special option package, you get a full-size Ford pickup with savings up to $2,638. Or Bronco 2 XLT, power and performance with savings up to $2,427. Or Ford Ranger XLT with savings up to $1,756. See your local world-class Ford dealer. Recommendation, buy now. Serving portions of Pennsylvania, Ohio, West Virginia, and Maryland. Jeopardy! Tomorrow night at 7, here on Channel 11. Welcome back to NFL Live. The subject is a senior football player at Holy Cross who is indeed a throwback. Gordon Lockbaum is a legitimate student, and he's a good player all the time. The full 60 minutes of a ball game. Offense and defense. Here's Frank DeFord. They play football for 92 autumns here at Holy Cross in Worcester, Massachusetts. And Gordy Lockbaum, who's a senior, 5'11", 195, he could have played the game in any one of those 92 seasons. Gordy Lockbaum plays offense and defense in the same game. And he's very good at both. Last year in the Heisman Trophy balloting, he finished fifth, which is all the more amazing because Holy Cross isn't big time. It's Division I, AA. The Crusaders have a very good team this year, but they won't be going to any bowl. The school doesn't allow it. They don't think that sort of thing is very important. Here they play football for the joy, for the game itself. In visiting with Gordy on campus a few days ago, the sheer exuberance of his being a complete player came through all the more. I get more for my money, I guess you could say. Uh, to be able to be out on the field as much as I am is, is a bonus, because when you come to play college football most people just assume the role is either a defensive player or an offensive player some are fortunate enough to be able to contribute on special teams but I've been uh, given the opportunity to do all three and that's been a that's been a gift I believe Judy Collins had the famous song I've looked at love from both sides now well you unlike a lot of people have been able to look at football from both sides offense and defense which one do you prefer well in the scheme of our our offense, I, I feel very comfortable there. I, I'm able to run the ball. I'm able to receive the ball. They even let me throw the ball once in a while. I, I don't do it too well, but I get that opportunity. Uh, although I don't like to write off defense because uh, our defense is very uh, dynamic. It's, it's, uh, it challenges people, and that, 
that gives me the opportunity to blitz and to cover people man to man and get very involved in what we're doing over there. Okay, tough play. Third and 12, you come out of the huddle, it's gonna be a pass. You flank out, number 17. You listen to the signals, you look across the line, and there is number 17, Gordon Lockbaum. Who's gonna win this battle, the defender or the pass catcher? Well, uh, I I'd say, given that we each have equal athletic ability, uh, I'd say the receiver will probably make the catch because uh, he knows where he's going and the defender has no idea yet. That's a very diplomatic answer that you gave for the, for the defender. What about all the talk about the Heisman? Does it bother you, distract you? Do you like it? After our team won the state championship in high school, my, one of my uncles said to me, he goes, uh, you know, if you become All-American, I'll give you a little you know, present. He said, when you win the Heisman, I'll give you a present. And I just said, okay, Uncle George, whatever you say. And I really didn't consider that as being a possibility. And then last year when the talk started happening, I gave him a call real quick, and, and I said, who would have ever thought? And uh, I guess he had a little bit more insight than I had at the time. <laughs> It's the middle of autumn, 1987. Where's Gordon Lockbaum gonna be the middle of autumn, 1988? Uh, that's a good question. Hopefully, uh, I'll be playing football. I'd love to be playing football in the National Football League uh, uh, or anywhere for that matter. Um, it's been a dream of mine to play professional football and I think it'd be very tough for me to give it all up uh, after this season uh, with all the athletics and athletic goals I've been you know, seeking and achieving over the years. So. Uh, I, I'm sure football will be in my plans next year. The Heisman Trophy was never meant to be a springboard for pro football or for anything else. The Heisman Trophy stands for one thing, and that's college football. And on the trophy, it doesn't say anything about grade or best. It says simply, outstanding college football player in the United States. And in my dictionary, outstanding means prominent, striking, conspicuous. Gordy Lockbaum does something every Saturday that almost nobody else has done for a quarter of a century. And in my book, that's very conspicuous. In a way, in fact, Gordy Lockbaum is a hero. And this time next autumn, when the leaves are changing again and the pigskins are in the air and the frost is on the ground in Worcester, Massachusetts, there'll be a great many fine football players all over the United States in college. But college football will be lacking a fine hero. Well, does he really have a chance to win the Heisman? Chance. Slim. Uh, it's an old wide open year, and in wide open years it usually goes to Notre Dame, and Tim Brown is certainly an able candidate. But never forget that the Heisman Trophy, more than any award in sport, is style over substance. If the best player in the country wins it, it's often a coincidence. You really uh, don't have any chance at all if you're a lineman, a defensive player. You, you win it if you're a quarterback who throws for yardage or, or a halfback who runs and occasionally a flanker back. So I'm saying, why not give it to this kid who has so many special ingredients and brings so much to the game, even through his first touchdown pass yesterday? You know, a few years ago when Doug Flutie won it, I thought he was the only real choice for the award, the guy who should have gotten it, even as I thought that there were others who would be much better professional quarterbacks, and I couldn't understand why so many writers didn't appreciate the difference. They all stood up and they said, oh, this guy won't be as good as Chuck Long. He won't be as good as Bernie Kosar in the pro. That was never the point. But, but as I said, when I was standing there at, at Holy Cross, that's not the idea. We're not trying to be pro scouts. And it's very distressing to me, as a matter of fact, and this leaves no stone unturned, that, that so many people vote for the local candidate. There's a high mm -hmm. correlation about where the voters come from and who they vote for geographically, and that's, that's not fair. A lot of times they rationalize that by saying, I've got to balance what the yeah. other prejudiced people are going to do on the other side of the country. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not fair, and, and if you get somebody who symbolizes so many t terrific things and does so much and is so unique, then I'd say he'd be an awful nice representative. If Lockbaum doesn't play in the pros, what will he do? I think he'll try very hard. He's talking about Wall Street, and uh, even in this market, I think he could sell a few stocks. He's how much, how nice much does kid. he want to play in the NFL? He wants desperately to play in the NFL. Uh, and I think that he's the kind of person who's an overachiever. And I'd say take a chance on him, because I think he could do an awful lot on your team and, and, and be the best 43rd player on the team or 44th player. All right, Frank, thanks a lot. NFL Live halftime activities will continue. Please stay with us. Back at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, we're at halftime with the Kansas City Chiefs leading the Pittsburgh Steelers by a 10-7 count. Here's what happened in the first half. 
Pittsburgh on his first possession. Watch Jack Del Rio supply the hit. The ball comes loose. Bill Moss recovers it for a touchdown for Kansas City. Watch it from another angle, Michael. It's very ironic that Bill Moss, number 63 in the middle of your screen, scores his first touchdown in the NFL against Mike Webster of the Pittsburgh Steelers, whom he idolizes. He is very elated indeed. The Pittsburgh Steelers, though, got on the board with a beautifully executed drive. They marched all the way downfield, and then Mark Malone finding Rodney Carter in the corner of the end zone for the Pittsburgh touchdown in that first half. Nice play by Carter to pick up the touchdown there. Nice 360 turn. And, you know, Malone's having a problem throwing the ball. He's just not throwing the ball very well. There's no zip on the ball for him. He's got to get the zip on it. The running game, on the other hand, for the Pittsburgh Steelers is doing very well. Yeah, of course, Malone threw an interception just toward the end of the first half, and a uh, field goal by Kansas City gave them the lead, 10-7. This game very reminiscent of last uh, season, the last game of the regular season when Kansas City beat Pittsburgh at three rivers without scoring an offensive point in the game. Well, you know, it's sometimes it seems like your offense takes a day off, but if your defense is playing well and if your special teams are playing well, you still have two-thirds of a chance of winning that game. Chuck Noll has to be confident that his running game has returned. He knows that he can move the ball against the Kansas City Chiefs. It's just the matter of getting some points. Nick Lowry will kick it off. And this kickoff sponsored by Budweiser, the king of beers. Taken by Stone. Reverses his field and is tackled at the 22-yard line. Downfield, Todd Howard making the stop for Kansas City as Mark Malone and company set up shop at their own 22-yard line. 10-7, Kansas City leading, getting a field goal just before halftime after Duran Cherry picked off a Mark Malone pass. It'll be interesting to see what they do on the first series of this game. Number one, they've got to get enough players in the ball game to uh, do the Steelers. And it's going to be... Uh, the extra man finally coming on. I didn't see who it was. It was Theo Young, another tight end. There are the first half stats. With the Steelers dominating the stats, but not the score. Ernest Jackson stopped by Mike Bell and Chuck Knowles' team. Right back to the ground game. That was successful for them in the first half. It sure was. They had 180 yards rushing in the first half. That's more than they had the last two games put together. There's Ernest Jackson, who is approaching 100 yards as we begin the third quarter. Second and eight for Pittsburgh. Malone's pass complete to Stallworth at the 30. He's going to be about two yards short of the first down. J.C. Pearson prevented him from getting first down yardage. But the veteran Stallworth with another grab. Already holds six Pittsburgh receiving records and the 15th leading NFL all-time receiver. Over 8,000 yards in his career and five grabs today. Adding to that quite extensively. The Pittsburgh Steelers are working a lot on J.C. Pearson, the second-year man from Washington, because Kevin Ross is hurt. Blankenship, Lee and Young, three tight ends. They keep it on the ground to Abercrombie who is close to the first down. Art still wrapped up his legs and took him down. And it'll depend on the spot of the football. Kansas City Chief players think they stopped the first down, but the officials are going to measure anyway, just to make sure. Jim Tunney calls in the chains. First possession of the second half. The Steelers Dr. close two, to a first two, down. Three, they trail 10-7. So many players around, I really can't see. Did he make it or not? Oh, they're a little bit short. Just a little short. Just a couple of inches short of the first down. Chuck Knoll facing a decision. To try to pick it up fourth and inches, or do you punt it away? He's going for it. Fourth and, and inches on the 32-yard line. He's, he's confident in his rushing game today. What a difference a week makes. They've got the running game going in high gear today, and they'll try to call on it one more time on fourth and inches. Malone on the sneak, he didn't get much, but he only needed a couple of inches. A 
Again, the spot of the football becomes crucial in this situation. Noel deciding to go on fourth down, backed up in his own territory. Well, they were spotted on the 32 the last time. He seems to have picked up at least half a yard. I think they do have the first down. Your eyes are better than mine, then. They're going to measure it. <laughs> oh, I'm positive they got it. It is a first down for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Knowles' gamble pays off. Here's how it happened. Just a simple quarterback sneak. He sneaks into the right side of his line. Does get pounded quite a bit, but the spot of the ball is what matters, and he got the first down. A lot of people in there. It's at the 33 of Pittsburgh. Malone rushing. As you saw the flags fly after the premature movement. I think they had a blitz on that time. In Pearson was indeed coming, but came a little too quickly. Made contact with Mike Webster, who, being the rock he is, just stood solid in there, took the hit, and got the five yards. Would have been interesting had he been going all the way. Penalties have really hurt the Steelers. That's what stopped their drives and, and turnovers, but the penalties you cannot afford to have during any kind of lengthy drive. First and five now for the Steelers. Look-in pass complete to Sweeney. Down at midfield, and a Pittsburgh first down. Aaron Pearson made sure he didn't get up and run a little further. But Pittsburgh taking the ball on its own 23, now up to midfield with a first down. Again, Malone's going to go with that quick pass, the little look-in pass to get his confidence up. And still, he's throwing the ball a little bit low today. His, his receptions, the receptions they've made are low or really over the head of the receiver. They can't get to him. Jackson into Kansas City territory to about the 47-yard line. Give him a gain of three. Make it second and seven coming up for the Steelers. Tackle on the play by Art Still with help from Dino Hackett. Second and seven. We haven't heard very much of Dino Hackett. There you see Art Still, but we haven't heard very much of Dino Hackett. He played uh, last week and injured his neck against Chicago. He's got that big bundle on the back of his neck to protect it from going back too far. Jackson fights his way to the 41-yard line. He's going to be about a yard short of the first down. Dino Hackett on the stop for the second consecutive play and there you see that I don't know what you call it you call it a bundle I don't know what you call it but it's protecting the injured neck of Dino Hackett the second year man out of Appalachian State who finished in the top three in all the polls for the NFL defensive rookie of the year a year ago and Ernest Jackson as his fourth 100 yard rushing game this year and the 12th of his career with that last carry you'll get another chance in front, turns the corner and rambles inside the 30-yard line of Kansas City. Deron Cherry able to force him out of bounds. But with Wolfley leading the play, it was Jackson rambling for 12. Very successful play for them today. You see Craig Wolfley out in front along with Abercrombie and Ernest Jackson just runs over Cherry here. Uh, gets knocked out of bounds, but he picks up good yardage. Cherry did a good job of shedding Abercrombie to make the stop. He made the only play he could make, and that was just to stay alive and hope somebody could come and help him. Fortunately enough for him, he made the play by himself. First down, Steelers, 28 of the Chiefs. Abercrombie stopped for a short gain. Aaron Pearson was ready for that one. Well, they tried to run basically the same play on the other side with uh, Jackson leading the way for Abercrombie. And unfortunately, he could not return the favor with a good block. Lloyd Burris just shed him aside and picked up the tackle. See the numbers on Abercrombie as the Steelers are threatening to put two runners over 100 yards today. Jackson has already achieved that. Second and eight. for the end zone. Incomplete. John Stallworth couldn't make the catch. 
Had a couple of Chiefs around him, and J.C. Pearson might have got a hand in there to knock it away. Art still, meanwhile, was putting the pressure on Malone. He had pretty good blocking that time. Up front, the pressure was there. You see in the middle of your screen, Art still number 67 coming around. He just beats his man, and <laughs> number 62 jumps back to push him out of the way. He did have plenty of time to throw the ball. It was just underthrown again, and a nice defensive play. Stallworth probably could have made the catch, but it would have been a miracle catch at best. J.C. Pearson, a good play to knock that one loose. Nickel defense in for Kansas City. It's third and eight for the Steelers. Wide open. Carter. Touchdown. Rodney Carter, the first-year player out of Purdue with his second touchdown reception of the day. This one covers 26 yards. He was wide open across the middle and then rambled into the end zone. Here you see the veteran Mike Webster pointing out that there's a blitzer. There's some trouble coming up the middle, and he's going to pick it up and take it up on himself to make sure that he has plenty of time, Malone does, to make the throw. Anderson with the extra point. It's good. And the Pittsburgh Steelers begin a drive on their own 23 on the first possession of the second half. March downfield to take the lead. It's 14-10 Pittsburgh. Welcome new Ford Festiva to the street. Quick, maneuverable, with 42 standard features and a six-year, 60,000-mile powertrain warranty. It's so neat, complete, the words on the street. It's a Ford. It's a Festiva. It's a Ford. It's a Festiva. Have you driven a Ford lately? Until 20 years ago, the Southern Pacific Railroad ran on train loads of paper and pencils. We got smart and we said we need a computer to keep track of where all these cars are going. We sat side by side, IBM and SP, to take those rail operations and put it into computer automation. We programmed into the computer where all these cars are destined. So the computer knows where they're going and there's the train. Well, we've jumped in the 21st century. And it's still the same old track, but we just do it better. We do it better. Lafitte, Louisiana, and old Milwaukee boats mean something great to these guys. Lafitte means flat bottom boat racing. And a Cajun feast that'll set your mouth on fire. And old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp, old Milwaukee beer. And smooth, golden, old Milwaukee life. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place. An old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and old Milwaukee life. It doesn't get any better than this. Today's game is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light. It doesn't get any better than this. And by IBM. Tom Hammond and Michael Jackson, Arrowhead Stadium, where the Steelers have just taken their first lead, 14-10. Anderson's kickoff taken by Palmer. Almost broke the tackle. He gets it down to the 29-yard line. Mike Merriweather made the stop, and Merriweather was about the only man that would kept Palmer from a long gaining kickoff return that covered 23 yards. In the middle of your screen, you see 85. That's Calvin Swinney. He and Rodney Carter ran a crossing route and got the defensive backfield confused, allowing Carter to end up wide open and scoring the touchdown. But it was the motion man, Calvin Swinney, who set that play up. 11 plays to cover the 77 yards, just over five minutes, with Malone hitting Carter with a 26-yard pass, and it's 14-10 Steelers. Kenny, bootlegs, pass is complete to Hayes. Jonathan Hayes taken out of bounds at about the 35-yard line by Woodruff. Kansas City not wanting to go too fast, but to get something going here, a little safe route there to Jonathan Hayes from Bill Kenny for five yards. We had a look at Henry Marshall bringing in the play to Bill Kenny. Marshall, the 12-year veteran out of Missouri, honored before today's game as the Chiefs' all-time leading receiver. Two weeks ago, he passed another number 89, Otis Taylor, to be the Chiefs' all-time top receiver. That's Henry Marshall. 
Herman Hurd gets his first carry of the day and doesn't get a whole lot out of it. David Little, one of the inside linebackers, right there to stop him after a short game. Herman Hurd hasn't seen very much action this year, but I remember playing against him, and he used to run some fantastic pass routes. He's only he got 76 yards rushing this year, but his pass routes used to just scare me to death coming out of the backfield. And Hurd does come out of the backfield to the sideline, replaced by Larry Moriarty. Third and two for the Kansas City Chiefs. Under nine minutes left in the third quarter, Steelers leading for the first time, 14-10. Pitch it to Akoya. He's got the first down. Akoya found a hole and spurted through to the 45-yard line. Greg Carr made the stop. Boy, Greg Carr saved himself and the rest of that Pittsburgh Steeler defense a lot of running because Akoya was very close to breaking that. He comes in, gets a block to Moriarty, and just his sheer power and strength and speed gets him the first down. But he was very close to breaking that one. They made a nice play and saving a, a touchdown there. There's a Koya who weighs 253 pounds and runs a 4-4-40. Lowry, or Kenny, passing complete to Moriarty. He got back to the line of scrimmage, and that was all. Dwayne Rudris, the quarterback, was all over Moriarty, who caught the pass out of the backfield. There's that I don't, cast on the injured wrist of Bill Kenny. I don't think uh, Okoya has quite picked up the pass blocking that time. He got pushed back into Kenny, and that's what hurt his hand. You see Willis pushing him over and finally getting on top of Kenny. You can't have that happen to your quarterback, especially when he's got a bad hand to start with. All rookie backfield now as Palmer joins Okoya. Draw play to Palmer with a flag down. Palmer gets about four yards. Donnie Shell makes the tackle, the 35-year-old strong safety of the Steelers. And as you see, the ticker will call it an offside against Pittsburgh. Buffalo in that game against Denver, by the way, is Keith Willis was guilty of the offside. I was about to say in that Buffalo-Denver game, the Bills have blocked two punts for safeties out of the end zone. Lots of surprises today. Green Bay still on top of Chicago, which is or could not be described as a surprise because so were the Kansas City Chiefs by two touchdowns last week. McMahon rallied them a week ago. We'll see if he can do the same. Here, the Chiefs in good shape with a give to Palmer. Cuts back. Nice running by Paul Palmer. He's got the first down for Kansas City. Thomas Everett made the stop. Let's pause briefly now for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. You're watching Channel 11, WPXI-TV, Pittsburgh. Tom Hammond and Michael Jackson, Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. We're in the third quarter, 6.40 to play, with the Steelers holding a 14-10 lead on the Kansas City Chiefs. But the Chiefs marching with a first down at the Steeler 41. Okoya carries people with him to the 35-yard line. Hanging on for dear life was David Little, who is outweighed by Okoya. Little, the linebacker, goes at 242. Okoya, the running back, at 253. And when they meet, that's almost 500 pounds going there. 83 yards against that Bear defense, best in the NFL. Today, he has 43 yards, averaging 4.3 a carry. Well, he's been slowed. He's got that strained shoulder in the first quarter, but he's picking up speed now in the second half. He got six on that last carry at second and four. Kenny's pass, complete. Carson has the first down, out of bounds. At the 26-yard line, Dwayne Woodruff, all he could do is take Carson out of bounds as the Chiefs rack up another first down. Carlos Carson. It's very easy to throw that ball outside there. It's a dangerous pass, even though they made it look real close. Uh, Minnesota, you see, leading the Raiders 14-3 as opposed to trailing. Now you see a correction on one of our scores on the 10-minute ticker.
Herman Hurd. Got a yard, maybe two. Mike Merriweather. Oh, yeah. Somebody's as the flag going to be goes flagged down. On that. You cannot take off another player's helmet, and Merriweather took off Baldinger's helmet, or was it Cole? Some extracurricular activity going on out there. Little and Balding are going at it. Boy, you see in the middle of your screen getting the block. Here you see off to the side, David Little taking down and then ripping off the helmet of Rich Balding. You can't do that. That's a dangerous play there. And they're going to be assessed, I think, 15 yards on this penalty. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number 50 after the play was over. Half the distance of the goal line, first down. Jim Tunney on the call and a costly penalty for the Steeler defense. Well, the penalties have stopped a couple of Steeler drives and now a penalty aids a Kansas City drive. Chiefs have a first down at the 13 of Pittsburgh. <laughs> Okoya cuts up. Got a yard. David Little fired up for the penalty, comes right back to make another tackle. Well, sometimes penalties do fire you up. That time the Pittsburgh Steelers had nine guys in on that play. It'll be second and nine coming up, and there's a man that could play some defense, Mean Joe Green, now in his first year as an assistant coach with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Joe Green taking over the defensive line, something he should know quite a bit about. One of the greatest defensive linemen in the history of the NFL. Kenny looking to pass. Loose ball picked off. Dwayne Woodruff picks off the deflected pass. Now back to Shell. And Pittsburgh has the big turnover. You know, for an old man, Donnie Shell didn't move too bad just then. He's excited about it too. Bill off, Kenny. Off the hand of Carlos Carson. And the Steeders with their third interception of the day. He has plenty of time. He just throws into a bunch of men in the middle of the field. You see he had one receiver and four defensive players there. It uh, doesn't look good when you have all that in the middle. We're not a company. But no company has more pride in what they do. Or more pride in how well they do it. We offer you a meaningful and fulfilling future. One that goes far beyond the ordinary. One that brings with it the respect and admiration of Americans everywhere. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Air Force. The Marines. The Army. The Navy. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Green Bay, Wisconsin. 20 below. The last place you'd want to be with the cold. Unless you're the Green Bay Packer backers. So we asked them to try Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine. That stuff just cleared out my head. Should have found it a long time ago. Got rid of my aches and pains. Straight up my Ernie nose. And Alka-Seltzer Plus, that's all I ever needed. Eight of every ten Packer backers who tried it switched to Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine. Fast, effective relief for tough winter colds. Boards right in the streets and trails and roads We're carrying people and hauling loads When tough men need tough trucks and it's not enough America's truck, America's truck Is built for tough The big Ford pickups for 88 With new power, luxury interiors, popular features Tough trucks that have been number one for 10 straight years Now get $500 cash bonus on all new F-Series pickups with manual transmission America's favorite pastime returns to NBC as the nation's top rollers battle it out for Bowler of the Year honors. Join Jay Randolph and Hall of Famer Earl Anthony for the PBA Fall Tour next Saturday on NBC. Bill Kenny on the sideline talking to his fellow quarterbacks and his head coach. Todd Blackledge with a hat on. Frank Sire is over there and uh, Frank Gans, the head coach. As Kenny has just thrown an interception. <laughs> Trying to listen to Jim Tunney, the official, evidently on replay. They have ruled that the lateral from Woodruff 
to Shell was no good, and they're going to spot the ball at about the three-yard line. Remember, Woodruff picked off the deflected pass and then lateraled it. But they're not going to allow that, and they're going to mark it back on the three where the Steelers have it first and ten. Jackson got a yard. He's stopped by that 4-3 Kansas City defense. Art still back at the bottom of the stack, and Albert Lewis came up to help. Let's go back to that interception now as Kenny throws it off the hands of Carson. He throws it, and Carson, you see, you can barely see him coming to your screen. It seems like he saw men coming at him and heard footsteps. The contact, that's where they call the ball down, and it, it was a right, the right call to make. He was down. Woodruff's knees were down. So the no lateral one. was nullified because of that. This position on where they're at on the field now is where you like to get an offense, no matter how you get them there. Second and nine for the Steelers at their own four. Abercrombie takes it to the outside and lugs it to the nine-yard line where Dino Hackett pins him. In five yards on the play, it'll be third and four. Third and four, Walter Abercrombie has 10 rushes for 75 yards. But third and four down here, this is where your defense really gets fired up. I remember when I was playing, we got a team down here, and it didn't matter if we had just turned the ball over or punted the ball down here. This is where you can really cut loose. Unless they get the first down, then you're really down as a defensive player. But otherwise, you're fired up and ready to go. Abercrombie lined up behind Malone. Malone's pass, incomplete, intended for Abercrombie at the 15-yard line. Abercrombie had some room, but the pass was not on the mark. Again, and Pittsburgh mark, will have to punt. Again, Mark Malone throws the ball low. He bounces it to his receivers, and, you know, you, you hate to keep harping on this same subject, but that's what they talked about in the Pittsburgh press this week. Malone has plenty of time. The man is wide open. Abercrombie has Dino Hackett on him, but he's wide open. You can't catch that ball in the ground like that. So Harry Newsom now must punt from his own end zone after Malone's pass falls incomplete. Newsom averaging 38 and a half on his two punts today. They're going to come after this. Don't be surprised if they block this. Kansas City is coming. Evans is deep for the Chiefs. Here they come. Newsom got it away. There is a flag down. Good punt by Newsom. Out of bounds. Way back at the 24-yard line, but Newsom flat on his back and a flag laying right in front of him. He may be seriously hurt. This may not be an act here. He did get roughed, and he could be hurt. It'll be a five-yard running into the kicker penalty. Newsom got it off for 68 yards. See, a lot of Kansas City Chiefs are in there. They may have been blocked in there by number 33. Five yards, first down. That's not how Tunney saw it. He calls running into the punter, and it's a, it's a first down for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Five-yard penalty and a first down, so the Steelers keep possession. Newsom, under that pressure, got off a marvelous punt. Up on his feet and heading for the sideline. We'll take a break and be right back. All set, doctor. What's your condition? Still serious. Everything ready in Chicago? The surgical team will be waiting. Good. You'll be at the airport in seven minutes. Your flight's on time. This is going to be one complicated operation. That's why they called you. When you're something special, people know it. Snake River, Wyoming and Old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. The Snake River means fly fishing for lunker cutthroat trout. And Old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp Old Milwaukee beer. And smooth, golden Old Milwaukee light. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place. An Old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light. Fellas, it just doesn't get any better than this. Make red, be red. Make blue, be blue. Make colors as bright as light. Feel the brilliance of precision performance big screen TV. Only from RCA. Year in, year out, you expect quite a lot out of your car. 
But just what have you put into it lately? Give your car the good life with STP gas treatment. Well, I say kickers are a different breed. There's Harry Newsom. He's all right over on the sideline. Watch what happened again. Well, he gets a lot of pressure, and the people do run into him. He decides that he is down. He's been rough, but I got to see where this ball went. And now I can die. He had to sneak a little peek. He couldn't resist it then. Oh, no, I'm injured. He got the call, and the Steelers have the ball with a first down, leading 14-10, 250 left in the third quarter. Malone's pass is incomplete, intended for Stallworth, with good defense that time by J.C. Pearson. He got a hand in there to knock it away from the Steeler veteran. The veteran, John Stallworth, comes down, puts on good moves, and forces the man back, and comes back to the ball real good. Here you see this. He's coming back, and it's a great defensive play to get the hand in there by number 24, J.C. Pearson. Nice play by him. But he's, he's got his work cut out co covering Stallworth. Second and ten for the Steelers at their own 14. Pollard, nothing there. Mike Bell led the defensive charge for the Chiefs. The battle of first place teams, Indianapolis still in front. Green Bay continues to lead Chicago. Buffalo putting it to the Broncos. Looks like it's a rough day for AFC Western Division teams today. It certainly is. And for St. Louis. This is still the part of the field where you like to have your offensive opponent locked up down here. You can still cut loose on them. Three wide receivers to the right. Only Charles Lockett to the left. The loads pass incomplete. Abercrombie out of the backfield, drew a crowd over there. Hackett was closest to him. And another putting situation deep in their own territory for the Steelers. Chuck Noll has got to be wondering what's going wrong with his passing game. That time the ball was simply thrown behind Walter Abercrombie. He may have not had enough yards for the first down, but at least he could have gotten him out of this deep hole. And now you're going to see another rush, I think. Newsom this time stands on his two-yard line. And Clemens is deep for the Chiefs. Crowd of 45,249 picking up the noise level as Newsom gets the punt away. Another good one. Clemens at the 30. It's away from one man. He's got room. One man to beat the putter. Finally taken out of bounds. Newsom slowed him up, and the Steelers were able to get over to knock him out of bounds. Dwight Stone finally got him out, but it was Newsom, the punter, that slowed him down. 54-yard punt, 46 yards on the return by Clemens. It's a good thing that Harry Newsom wasn't hurt on that last punt. Michael Clemens makes some nice moves. He gets, he gets good blocking, and then the rest of it is just sheer talent. The hole is opened up wide for him, and he's just going to make some cuts and some nifty moves for a 46-yard return. And number 18, Newsom, slows him up right there, and Stone, who had missed him initially, gets downfield to make the tackle. Chiefs with a first down. Okoya carries, powers ahead inside the 20-yard line. Brian Hinkle hanging on for dear life. Well, Christian Okoya and the, and the Kansas City offense has got to be fired up after that 46-yard run back. You had your, your opponent locked up down here in your territory. You get the ball back, and you end up in your same spot. There's nothing greater than that. Actually, there is. He could have run it back for a touchdown, I guess. Didn't miss by much. At the 19, it's second and three for Kansas City. Just over a minute left in the third quarter. Steeders leading 14-10. Changes the play. He's going for six. And the off pattern complete to Carson, who takes it for a Kansas City first down. Dwayne Woodruff gave him a little bump after he got him out of bounds, but no call. And the ball is spotted at the Pittsburgh 11-yard line. That's not a very big deal type of play, but it is in a sense. 
you run the short little out, you get the receipt, you get the defender off of you, and you can set him up for something down the line. You see that bump out of bounds. The crowd didn't like it, but no penalty flag was thrown. Carlos Carson having his third big game in a row. Hayes and Kaufman, two tight ends on first down at the 11. Akoya made a short gain out of really nothing at all. He was met at the line of scrimmage, and then the whole pile seemed to move forward with Akoya's legs churning. Keith Gary and Mike Merriweather will get credit for the tackle. Well, as you said, Tom, they have two tight ends in the game, and what they're going to do is come up and audible the play. They're going to go away from where Donnie Shell, number 31, is lined up for the Pittsburgh Steelers, going to the weak safety and weak side of that offensive set. Now they've taken the second tight end out. And they've got the two rookie running backs here, Palmer and Akoya. Kenny communicating something to Carson. Let's see if he goes to it. Nope. They keep it on the ground to Akoya. Takes the pitch and rambles short of the five-yard line. And that play brings the third quarter to an end. At the end of the third quarter, the score, the Pittsburgh Steelers 14, the Kansas City Chiefs 10. We'll be back after a word from your local station. The Wall Street roller coaster rages on. Get the business news you need before it's too late on Before Hours and NBC News at Sunrise, your first business source. Shiver me timbers, buried treasure. Where do we dig, Captain? We don't dig, mighty. We rub at Equibank. Look. Gold to blues. Aye, you rub them to uncover the buried treasure, where you can instantly win a $60 gold coin. Or a Florida vacation. Aye. A Buick Regal. Ah. Even a 0% mortgage. Ah There's buried treasure for everyone at Equipine. Remember, you don't dig, you rub. Yeah. <laughs> When you make a McDonald's McDLT fresh, you make a great hamburger. Yeah. When you put it together, fresh on the spot, yeah. you make McDLT taste so crisp and hot. Because you make McDLT, it's never soggy, never wilted. It's a good time for the great taste. You make a great hamburger. A McDonald's! Hey, it's the Tri-State Area McDonald's 30th anniversary. Starting Monday, get any large sandwich for only 99 cents. Look for our 99 cent sandwich celebration starting Monday at McDonald's. There's a new beer in town, and it's called American Beer. I love the fresh, natural taste of pure American. When I think about how good we have it here, I say my thanks and toast the glory of America with the one they call American Beer. There's only one they call American Beer. Taste the glory. Attorneys in Conflict, tomorrow at 4.30 on The Judge. Kansas City has the ball in the Pittsburgh Six. Here's one of the reasons why. Something interesting to watch about that, the first man down was number 20, and watch who makes the tackle on this play. Number 20 for Pittsburgh. Newsom slowed him up. Clemens, though, gave the Chiefs great field position. They're third and five. Kenny, sack. The Steelers, not known for their sacks, it's been one of their real weak spots, but they get a big one right there. Kenny may have hurt that wrist again. And he's slow to get up. Number 98, Gerald Williams gets in for the sack, and Kenny is slow to get up and gingerly gets off. Watch the middle of your screen, number 98 just beats his man and comes in and makes the tackle. Then everybody piles on top of Kenny, and that may have caused him to, to at least bruise that, that wrist again. So Lowry's on to attempt a 27-yard field goal. Frank Sire is the holder. Kenny normally holds, but with that injured wrist, Sire is the quarterback that holds today. We see the sacks for the Steelers. 27-yard attempt by Lowry. And it's good. So the Kansas City Chiefs get three after the great punt return by Clemens. It's 14-13. Glacier Bay, Alaska, and old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. 
Glacier Bay means the one and only Alaskan king crab. Sweet, fresh, and big. And old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp old Milwaukee beer. And smooth, golden old Milwaukee light. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place. An old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and old Milwaukee light. Hey, guys. It doesn't get any better than this. Getting there can be more than half the fun. Ford Escort GT. It's a Radio Shack Merry Christmas. Joey, it's time for bed. <laughs> he hasn't put his Radio Shack spell and math down all day. Spell and math turns learning into fun. Radio Shack Spell and Math has 15 spelling and math games that educate during playtime. Haven't you learned enough tonight? Come on, fella. Bedtime. Well, I'm not tired. Bet your spell and math can count sheep. Educational toys. Education through imagination. $9.95 to $24.95. Only at Radio Shack. Next Sunday, the NFL plays here when the Jets battle the Chiefs. Before your team takes the field, our team hits the air. NFL Live. 14-13, the Steeders lead cut to one. Bill Kenny sacked and perhaps re-injuring that wrist. He was even limping a little bit as he came off. He's hit on 10 of 19 today and has thrown three interceptions. Perhaps we could see a change. Todd Blackledge, the man that started the first two games, or Frank Sire. Woodson. Woodson tried to change direction and lost his footing, stumbled to the turf at about the 22-yard line, where he's covered by Todd Howard. I think he had too many holes open, and he had, on the right side, he had two holes wide open, and he cut to the left and had nothing in front of him. Three-quarter stats. The Steelers dominating and leading by one. Neither quarterback has had a particularly good day, but as... Yet no changes in practice this past week. Buddy Brister, Bobby Brister got uh, equal time in practice with Mark Malone, but Malone's gone all the way and has hit 10 of 21, including two touchdowns to Rodney Carter. Abercrombie. Stopped short of the 25, got about three yards before Mike Bell and Art Steele put the clamps on him. The Chiefs with that four-man defensive line featuring all first-round draft choices. There's Todd Blackledge, who, if he got in the game against the Steelers today, would be facing his dad, who is an assistant coach with Pittsburgh. Ron Blackledge coaches the offensive line for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Pitch it to Jackson. Nothing there. Stop for a loss. Mike Bell led the charge. Boy, Abercrombie missed everybody on that play, believe it or not. He was coming out leading that play around. And looking up, seeing Mike Bell, I can understand why he ducked underneath him and let Jackson come on his own. Here you see Mike Bell. Abercrombie's just going to miss him. So he's out there with the greeting party. Third down coming up. Third and long for the Steelers. Third and nine. They hit on eight and 13 third downs today. Nickel defense for Kansas City. Malone's pass intended for Stallworth into the interference as a flag. Check the arm on that official. He threw the flag farther than Malone threw the football. That's exactly right. He threw that from the 50, and it ended up on the 24-yard line. J.C. Pearson will be called for the interference. There again, it's just simply a matter of a young man going up against a veteran like John Stallworth. You won't see it here. He's got his arm already around the damage has been done. Defense. Number 24, five yards, first down. The damage was done by the time we came to the pick, to the uh, screen with that shot, but he did indeed hold John Stallworth. Director Bob Levy and producer Ken Edmondson getting new pictures from Arrowhead today where Kenny is keeping warm on the sideline. Malone on the rollout. Got room to run. Out of bounds. 
at the 34, short of the first down. Jack Del Rio made sure he went out of bounds. That was a wise decision by Malone to run that ball. He didn't have anybody who was open enough to get the ball to, so he just took his chances and picked up five yards on it. So second down coming up for Chuck Knoll's squad. 19th season heading the Steeler troops. Sweeney who was streaking down the sideline Albert Lewis was right there with him but a catch that Sweeney might have made and he might have made it and he got past Albert Lewis on the jam there it was a man-to-man -man coverage you'll see at the top of your screen Albert Lewis lets him get outside of him then starts to outrun him he makes a great recovery though does Albert Lewis to knock that ball away otherwise it could have been six that was a pretty well-thrown pass by Malone, leading Sweeney just enough where the defense couldn't get it, but Sweeney unable to hang on. Third and four, Malone throws it right to the Chiefs. Mark Robinson will finally be dragged down by Mark Malone, but Malone threw it right to Robinson, who returned it 16 yards in Kansas City in good shape. Tell you, Mark Robinson sat there and he was reading Malone all the way on that. He stepped in front of the intended receiver who was being covered man to man by J.C. Pearson. And it looked like Malone threw it right to him. It actually looks like he was the intended receiver. Malone has plenty of time here. Gets good blocking up front. Number 30 is in the middle of your screen. He's sitting there. The ball is intended for him. And he makes the catch and comes back with it. Speaking of quarterbacks, Bill Kinney has come back out for the Chiefs who have a first down at the Steeler 24-yard line. Herman Hurd tries to get outside. Spun down by Everett. At about five yards on the play, though, the Kansas City defense continues to make the big plays. The offense has yet to score. Two field goals, and the defense has recovered a fumble two first place teams there Indianapolis and San Diego knotted at 13 Denver still behind the big question are the Chargers and are the Colts for real they're evenly matched that's for sure they're 13 13 second and six for the Chiefs Okoya on the draw dives inside the 15 going to be a yard or two short of the first down, I believe, depending on where they spot it. The big fella's getting fired up now. He got a lot of blocking out in front of him with Edicks and Lutz and Kaufman coming around, leading the play. And Kaufman now shaking he's up. coming off. Kaufman, the veteran tight end, 10 years in the league out of Kansas State. Already they've seen Walt Arnold injured. In the first half, and unable to play, so they're down to Jonathan Hayes, one tight end, if Kaufman can't go. Kansas City is a little bit confused right now. They had Irv Eatman come in to the game, and now they send him out and come back with the wide receiver for him. And a timeout taken by the Steelers. Yesterday, with all the skill and innovation of today, you couldn't lose. Blue Cross and Blue Shield carry the caring card. Today's small cars are tougher than ever on oil. Their high compression engines not only rev high, they can run hotter than regular small car engines. Their searing heat can begin to break down in oil immediately. That's why there's Castrol, the only leading motor oil that in every grade provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol before your engine does something to get you heated up. Castrol, engineered for today's smaller cars. 
You want anything? How about a light? Oh. Whoa! <laughs> uh, oh, Bob. Could you make that a Bud Light? If you want the great taste of Bud Light, ask for it. Did you see... No. <laughs> Did you? No. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. Today's game is brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. By AT&T, the right choice. And by Castrol, the motor oil engineered for today's smaller cars. Tom Hammond and Michael Jackson, along with producer Ken Edmondson, director Bob Levy at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. 11.45 left in the fourth quarter. Pittsburgh leading Kansas City 14 to 13, but the Chiefs with the ball at the Pittsburgh 14 yard line with a third and one. Okoya spins his way ahead for the first down. Christian Okoya was hit at about the first down marker, but was able to spin free and get first down yardage. Gary Dunn. Finally tackling Okoya. But we got a holding call coming up against Kansas City. I didn't even see the flag, but it's going to nullify the first down run. Well, I didn't see the flag either, but you can bet Frank Gans did. That's one thing that has really hurt the Chiefs today and the, the Pittsburgh Steelers, for that matter, are penalties down close to the goal line. The Chiefs seem to make the crucial mistake, a penalty or a turnover, and Pittsburgh really in the same boat. And this game of Kansas City is a little reminiscent of their effort against San Diego two weeks ago. Holding during the running play, number 85, offense, 10 yards, still third down. Jonathan Hayes, the tight end, guilty of the hold. I was about to say the penalties really hurt them against the Chargers two weeks ago. Well, anytime you get a penalty anywhere on the field, it'll hurt you, but especially when you're going in for a uh, leading touchdown or the winning touchdown. So it's third and 11 now for Kansas City from the 24-yard line. Four wide receivers, Carson in motion. Instead, Okoye gets the handoff, bounces to the 20-yard line. He got four yards. Merriweather takes, makes the tackle for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and so the crowd of 45,000 not liking the call as Lowry comes on to attempt the field goal. Well, they don't like the call, but you have to remember that the score is only 14-13. A field goal will give them a lead. Frank Gans not wanting to risk putting it in the air. And so running the ball and settling for the field goal attempt. Lowry two for two in the field goal department today. This one from 38 yards. Right through the uprights, Nick Lowry hits his third field goal of the afternoon. And the Kansas City Chiefs regain the lead, 16-14. I don't know. What are you going to do? I don't know. I'd go to college. Me yeah, too. If I had the money. Yeah. So what are you going to do? I don't know. What are you going to do? You don't want those fries. <laughs> what are you going to do, Jack? Eat your way to college? <laughs> hey, really? I'm going to college on the new GI Bill. You serve full-time in the armed forces or part-time in the reserves, and you earn a lot of money for tuition. The GI Bill. Are you using that pickle? For young men and women in the armed forces, it's a great place to start. See a local military recruiter. If you ever thought you had to give up comfort to get a close shave, think again. Norelco puts close and comfortable right in the palm of your hand with a revolutionary system that shaves skin close in a way that's incredibly comfortable. With a patented lift and cut system, that lifts each hair so it's possible to shave skin close without the blades even touching the skin. A shaver that defies logic gives you a shave that defies belief. Norelco Road Attract, where close and comfortable come face to face. Two years ago, this man won the $100,000 challenge. Last year, this law student won the $100,000 challenge. Now, in 1987, the $100,000 challenge is back. I've been working with my thumb to try to get in shape. you got to be confident, otherwise you're wiped out to start with. It's just in the reflexes, all in the thumb. This is the thumb that's going to make me rich. Watch the best challenge the best on the Jeopardy! $100,000 Tournament of Champions. Tomorrow at 7, here on Channel 11.
Birdie. The Kansas City Chiefs with a 16-14 lead over the Pittsburgh Steelers and 10-36 left in the game. Nick Lowry, who just kicked the field goal, will kick it to Woodson and Stone, who are deep for Pittsburgh. Stone about seven yards deep. He'll stay there. I believe that was Sanchez who had replaced uh, Woodson in the kick return coverage, and he downs it in the end zone. In any event, the Chiefs, special teams, and defense have done all the scoring in the last two games against the Steelers. Chiefs offense seems to get a day off against the Steelers team. Pittsburgh puts it in play from the 20. Malone passes it complete to Lee. Danzel Lee, one of the tight ends, wrapped up by Dino Hackett, but he got about eight yards. Chiefs. Pittsburgh passing on first down that time instead of the run, which we've seen most of the game. That's exactly right. They've got to get down and get something going. The Chiefs made the switch at outside linebacker that time. It didn't pay off for him. Aaron Pearson missed the tackle. Dino Hackett came in and made the tackle on Danzel Lee, who was a replacement player during the strike. Give Lee nine yards on the reception, make it second and one. Abercrombie hit and dropped behind the line by Pearson. Aaron Pearson, the 11th round draft choice a year ago, making the stop for a loss. He steps up and makes a nice play here, making up for that missed tackle. Just an off-tackle play. He cuts through everybody and makes the diving, the diving play there for a loss of a yard or so. Abercrombie. Now with 75 yards, lost yardage on that one. And Jackson already over 100 on the day. Four wide receivers in for the Steelers on third and three. Abercrombie is the only setback. He gets it on the draw. Abercrombie, tough running across the 30 for the Steeler first down. Pete Koch made the tackle on Abercrombie, but Strong running by the veteran out of Baylor enabled the Steelers to pick up the first down and keep the clock moving. Well, Kansas City was expecting pass on that play with only one running back in there, four wide receivers. They put on a nice little push in the middle, and Malone makes the handoff to Abercrombie. He picks up the first down through tough, hard running. Chuck Noll saying, hurry it up. The play clock down to 10 seconds. Rhodes pass, a floater. Stallworth interfered with by Pearson again. Pearson doesn't agree with that, but that was the right call. Pearson has two problems on that play. Number one, he's pass interference, defense, number 24, first down. He's got two problems. Number one, he's playing against a veteran, John Stallworth, who runs a nice route. He comes downfield puts a little move on, then comes back to the ball. And number two, the ball was floated out there again. If it had had the zip put on it, then he'd have made the play without uh, coming over Star Wars back. It's a, t it's a close play, but that ball was floated and gave him the opportunity to come over Star Wars back. First down for the Steelers at their own 46-yard line. They trail by two. Malone's it pass hits. deflected and incomplete. Check the scores now. Most of the games in the fourth quarter. Still tied at the Hoosier Dome. And the Packers still leading the Bears there in the third quarter. Buffalo holding the big lead over Denver. And the Raiders, another AFC West team losing. Cleveland having an easy afternoon with Atlanta. Here at 16-14 with 8 minutes, 21 seconds left. Abercrombie, oh. big hole, powers ahead to the 42-yard line where Lloyd Burris is able to take him down. But Abercrombie, with a strong run through a big hole, picks up another Steeler first down. 
That looked almost like a cross buck there, the old cross buck play. Malone fakes the handoff inside to Pollard and hands off to uh, Abercrombie going outside. And he picks up nice yards around that end. Nobody hits him for the first 10 yards. He's almost gone over 100 yards himself now. Pollard and Abercrombie in the backyard, uh, backfield here. Not the backyard, but the backfield. Malone's pass batted down again. Pete Koch, 6-6, up in the face of Malone to knock it away, the second consecutive pass that's been deflected. Second and 10. Well, there again, you've got to get those offense, those defensive players' hands down. Koch, you see, just jumps up and puts a big paw on it and knocks it back about 10 yards. Up front, the Chiefs have Bell at 6'4", 260. Koch, 6'6", 265. Moss, 6'5", 268. And still, 6'7", 255. That's a pretty tough line to throw over. Be a nice back line in basketball. Eighth play of the drive, second and 10. Malone on the bootleg. Hit at the 35-yard line and out of bounds to stop the clock. Albert Lewis cut the legs out from under Malone. Stopping the clock with seven and a half minutes left. Now Don't forget the second half of our doubleheader coming up next. Most of you folks will be seeing the great Dan Marino and the Miami Dolphins go head to head with another young quarterback that's got the passing game going. Boomer Esaias into the Bengals. Some of you will see Houston at San Francisco. That's coming up next here on NBC. Third and four for the Steelers, who have four wide receivers in the game. One of them, Carter, in the slot left has caught two touchdown passes. Abercrombie has the first down just short of the 30-yard line. Dino Hackett, Chiefs' leading tackler, gets credit for another. Carter comes into the game, and he's like you said before got the two touchdowns for the Pittsburgh Steelers but he makes a nice block on this play to allow Walter Abercrombie to pick up the necessary yardage for the first down I think the Chiefs were looking for pass especially with four wide receivers in the game again not having much luck there in rallying the crowd as the Steelers are driving for what they hope will be a go-ahead score Abercrombie now up to 97 yards on the day Steelers with a big lead in first down Abercrombie again as a flag flies Del Rio made the tackle for Kansas City, but it could be a holding call against Pittsburgh. It is. Those officials sure have some strong arms today. Noel was uh, having things go his way. Holding, 73 offense, 10 yards, still first down. 73 offense, Craig Wolfley, I just don't see where they're calling holding. He's got his hands in, in the regulated zones where they say you can put them, and they're calling him for holding. That's the ninth penalty on the Steelers today. Chuck Noll was marching down the field and eating up some time. Had things going his way, but now faces a first and 20. Carter and Pollard in the backfield. Malone retreats the pass and completes it to Lee. Out of bounds after a short gain at the, about the 35-yard line to Ron Cherry, bumping him out of bounds. Coaching staff of Kansas City very concerned about how to get this drive stopped. That pass good for five yards as the defensive signals go in. And Chuck Noll on the other side, hoping to keep the drive alive, now facing a second and 15. Carter had a hand on it, bobbled it. Pearson had it go through his hands, and it falls incomplete. Kansas City's playing a zone defense. They've got about five men underneath with the three deep. To, well, I'm sorry, they've got four underneath, five underneath, two deep. J.C. Pearson makes a nice move on this ball. Carter bobbles it, and he comes up and almost picks it off and takes it back the other way. But they've got a lot of men playing underneath and giving them an opportunity to break on the ball when Malone throws it. 
Blown under 50% as he is on the season to the rim. Third and 15 for him here. Pass complete to Stallworth. Still on his feet. Fighting for the first down and stopped short. There's a lot of people getting over on the ball on Stallworth, who was covered by Cherry on that side. Nice move by Stallworth to almost pick up the first down. There you see Cherry going over to get to Stallworth. Watch the move that Stallworth puts on him. One there, and he's just gonna fight his way through about four more people before he finally gets taken out of bounds. But there's knowing where the first down yardage is. So Anderson is on to try a field goal for Pittsburgh. 42-yard attempt. And it's no good. Anderson misses, and Kansas City hangs on to the lead, 16-14. You can depend on AT&T Long Distance thanks to the remarkable people who put our equipment to the test. I love wrecking things. This is a special laboratory. Here we create disasters. One disaster right after another. Why do we do all this? Once we understand how these things can destroy long-distance service, we can build equipment that'll stand up to it. We're reaching further to bring your world closer. Yeah, the storm's over. AT&T, the right choice. On the next People's Court, it's time for the big breakup. He was uh, becoming so verbally abusive. We were only together uh, Sunday. Monday and Tuesday. But why? She has her reasons. But he was harassing me. But he thinks there's a bigger excuse. I must have left the toilet seat up. Then at 4.30 on the judge, will love conquer all? Would either one of you like to propose anything? The People's Court, tomorrow at 4, followed by the judge at 4.30, here on Channel 11. To the sound of a closer, smoother shave, William's Electric Shave sets up my beard. So my shaver shaves closer, and I get a smoother shave. Listen to William's electric shave. Mm. The sound of a closer, smoother shave. <laughs> Fancy perfuming aftershave. It's got to be a quarterback's locker. Real guys who get mud on their uniforms use rugged, honest stuff. Ice blue aqua velva. There's something about today's aqua velva man. So you still think lame and are dumb? What would you do for a million dollars? Would you lie? Would you cheat? Would you kill? They did it all. Billionaire Boys Club tonight. Less than six minutes to play, and Kansas City clinging to a two-point lead, 16-14 here at Arrowhead Stadium. And once again, we've seen these two teams self-destruct. That time, Pittsburgh had a good drive going, but a penalty takes them out of good field position, and the field goal is missed. Well, you can't afford to miss field goals, but even more importantly, you cannot afford to make mistakes at critical points in the game right now. And that's where we are. The team that makes the fewest mistakes in the next five minutes should come out ahead. On first down, Christian Okoye takes the handoff, loses the ball. Another critical mistake. The Steelers have it. Indeed, another mistake, which could decide the game. Gerald Williams falls on the football, number 98. Christian Okoye hit hard, popped it up, and the Steelers have it. Well, that's only his third fumble of the year, but they come at critical times. Last week, it cost them the game at Chicago. Right now, it's a possibility that it could cost him this game. Christian Okoye is coming outside. He slows down. Donnie Shell gets in, then uh, puts the hit on him, and then the 27 comes in, puts another hit, and he coughs the ball up. He cannot afford to do that. That was Everett that had the big hit to knock the ball loose. Third fumble and 79 carries for Okoye. And Ernest Jackson, back in the game for the Steelers, gets the call. Flag down as Del Rio makes the tackle. And you can almost bet that Craig Wolf is going to get called with Holden. Well, it's just a matter of which one is going to uh, self-destruct first. Kansas City fumbles the ball. Pittsburgh with great field position and then a holding. Holding, 73 offense. And as you said, Craig Wolfley again. There's Wolfley, number 73. Chuck Noll livid on the sideline, ripped his headset off. 
Each team has had many opportunities squandered today. There you see Craig Wolfley on the right-hand side of your screen. I do not see where they're coming. Well, maybe that time I do see. It. He did have his hand up around the left hand, the left shoulder of the defensive player. But that's the only holding that I've seen on Wolfley today. First and 20 from the 37 for the Steelers. Jackson hit at the line of scrimmage and stopped for no gain by Bill Moss. Still tied up at the Hoosier Dome. And McMahon rallying the Bears, who only trail by one now, shades of a week ago. Raiders are taking, taking it in the shorts again. Look at St. Louis. They've come back on the Buccaneers. They're within four. Here at 16-14, Kansas City leading. Four minutes, 50 seconds left. But the Steelers with the ball at the 36. Second down, 19 for Pittsburgh. Malone's pass. Incomplete and almost intercepted. Sweeney couldn't hold it. It went through the hands of Albert Lewis on the rebound. He couldn't hold it either. Well, that was a ball thrown low to Sweeney, but he should have caught it. He had it both hands on it. You'll see that Albert Lewis was just taken by surprise when the ball bounced off Sweeney right here into his hands and then down to the ground. Albert Lewis, 29, made a stab at it, but he just couldn't come up with it. Malone on the day, still less than 50%, 13 and 30. Two touchdowns, two interceptions. Merrill Hodge into the game for Pittsburgh on third and 19. Pass is complete, but about 10 yards short of the first down territory needed. Catch made by Carter. Burris gets the tackle, and it'll bring another field goal situation up as Anderson comes back onto the field. The second all-time field goal accuracy kicker in NFL history, 77.3%, trailing only Morton Anderson of New Orleans. But he missed his last one. This one from 45 yards for the lead. And this one is good. Officially 44 yards as Gary Anderson hits the clutch field goal. And the Steelers have taken a one-point lead, 17-16, with four minutes, two seconds left. Well, you had to think it might come down to the field goal kickers, the two and three ranked kickers of all time. And Anderson hits this one perfectly. Well, I was a bit surprised that he missed that first field goal being the second leading accuracy kicker in the league, but he didn't make it. And Chuck Noll, you can see that he's very excited, thrilled about it himself in his own way. He almost willed it through there as he was had his fist clenched and was ready to get after it. And his team has bounced back to take a 17-16 lead. And, of course, Pittsburgh needs to keep winning. They're just a game out of first place in the AFC Central, and they play the leader, Houston, next week. That's exactly right. And talking with Frank Gantz yesterday from Kansas City, he was saying that his guys are playing as well as they can play, and they will not lose anything by losing last week. They just want to keep improving on what they did. But mistakes, again, have, have hurt them. Fumbles by Christian Okoye in both instances, instances of Ever the, the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. Anderson's kick fielded by Palmer about eight yards deep in the end zone, and he'll down it there. It'll be first down Chiefs at the 20. National Football League rules require that we present away games starting with the opening kickoff to stations in that team's home area. So viewers in Houston will be leaving this game in just a few minutes for a telecast involving your home team, the Oilers, against the 49ers. However, we'll continue to bring you reports on this game to keep you up to date. Second half of that doubleheader, some of you will see the Oilers at San Francisco. Others will see that expected shootout at Riverfront Stadium between the Dolphins and the Bengals. With a, or Kenny with a long count. His pass was deflected at the line of scrimmage, intended for Paul Kaufman, but Keith Willis got a hand on it. Well, the crowd is starting to get on Bill Kenny, just like they do any quarterback when their team's behind late in the game. But that pass was simply batted down, and it was not a very well-thrown ball. 
Once again, those of you in Houston will be leaving us to watch the Houston-San Francisco game. We'll keep you informed on the game throughout the rest of the afternoon through NFL Live. Bill Kenny calling his signals on second and ten. Okoya, the only setback. Completes it. Hayes with the reception has a Kansas City first down. Kenny improvising, finding Hayes coming across the middle and hitting him for the first down. 16 yards on the play. David Little knocked Hayes out of bounds. That time it looked like simply a matter of whether Kenny was going to run the ball for the first down or throw down field, and he chose to throw down to Jonathan Hayes to pick up the first down. He had good coverage downfield, but Jonathan Hayes was running away from David Little and finally found an opening that Kenny could get the ball in. Trailing by one, Kansas City has it on its own 37. Three minutes, 45 seconds left, the first down, Chiefs. <laughs> Akoya runs it to the 39-yard line where Gerald Williams stops him. Got about four yards as the clock reaches three and a half minutes left. Kansas Chiefs with all three timeouts remaining. Excuse me, Michael. Kansas City's in no hurry to get downfield. All they want to do is keep picking up first downs. They've got three minutes left in the game. They've got two timeouts left. They can get out and get in field goal range again. Frank Gans, who is fond of quoting Aristotle and other philosophers to his players, in a crucial situation here looking for win number two of the season. Kenny's pass behind Akoya. It'll be a rule of forward pass and incomplete. The Blues really ring out now as Donnie Shell was putting the pressure on Bill Kenny. Nick Lowry could come into play. He's the field goal kicker of the Chiefs and a good one. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. You're watching Channel 11, WPXI-TV, Pittsburgh. Tom Hammond and Michael Jackson, Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. Three minutes, two seconds left. And the Steelers leading the Kansas City Chiefs 17-16. Kansas City with the ball on its own 40, third and seven. Page, Marshall, and Carson. Three wide receivers in. And the shotgun is Bill Kenny. Kenny's protection breaks down, but he gets it away and completes it. Flag down. Page makes the reception. It's a little short of the first down, but a penalty flag on the field. Stephon Page saying that he was held up. Delton Hall defending against Page, and it appears it'll go against Pittsburgh. We have defensive holding. The pass is complete. We will measure for a first down. The protection around Kenny had just caved in. And he made an outstanding play just to get the ball off. And then Stephon Page comes up with the big catch, and he was held during the, uh, the play. Bill Kenny in the pocket out of the shotgun. And they're running games on the inside and outside, and everybody's coming in. It's just like a war inside there. He just simply stands tall, throws the ball downfield. Stephon Page comes up with a nice catch. See all the wires on the sideline. They couldn't get the chain out to measure. They had so many wires over there. Now they're bringing out the chains to see if Page picked up enough yardage for the first down. Page, the number two receiver on this team, but I think that's his first reception of the day. It is. San Diego with a field goal by Abbott taking the lead over the Colts at the Hoosier Dome. Eric Dickerson has gained over 120 yards in that game. Bo Jackson for the Raiders has gained over 70 but has fumbled. We've got a first down for Kansas City and look at the Cardinals. They appear to be down and out, and they've come storming back to take the lead over the Buccaneers. A lot of wild games around the league today, including this one. It's been a comedy of errors at times, 
But right now, the Steelers holding on to a one-point lead, 17-16. But Kansas City with a first down. The ball at the 39-yard line of the Chiefs. Fox starts. It shows 250. Akoya, nothing. Stacked up at the line of scrimmage and thrown back. David Little, Robin Cole, the inside linebackers, with help from Gerald Williams, throw Akoya back, and the fans are booing the running play. That three-man front of Pittsburgh is rising to the challenge right now. Christian Akoya has had his way with a lot of teams, but not right now. Michael, why wouldn't they put the ball in the air? Well, they still have two minutes and 20 seconds left. All they need is a field goal. It's not necessary for them to score a touchdown to win. They want to be conservative and get down there. Just they got Nick Lowry. He can kick the field goal. Final play before the two-minute warning. Kenny in the shotgun does put it in the air and throws it incomplete. Way over the head of the intended receiver. I guess it was Stephon Page. No one was really close. It was 10 yards away from any intended receiver. And again, that may be one of the reasons they don't put it in the air. They don't know where they're going to throw the ball to. There's a miscommunication going on between the receivers and the quarterbacks right now. They're either running the wrong pattern. Stephon Page is going to be wide open after he makes his break, but to no avail. And conversely, Henry Marshall on the other side of the field was wide open, which we could not see on camera. Neither quarterback is going to put this highlight film in his scrapbook today. It's third and nine for Kenny and the Chiefs. Kenny sacked. The ball's loose. He is hurt, too. He is hurt. Mike Fairweather knocked the ball loose. Kansas City gets the ball back. Two-minute warning coming up. Alcoa presents... Fantastic finishes, 1986. The Indianapolis Colts are losing again, this time to Atlanta. Trailing by two with only 20 seconds left, all they can do is watch as the Falcons prepare to kick it away. 14 straight losses for the Colts now. Hold it! The punt is blocked! Tate Randall spiked it. It's bouncing back to the 15. Eugene Daniel scoops it up and trots home! Colts win! Finally! Man, look at all these cans. They're worth a fortune. Joey, instead of recycling these cans for cash, I think we should donate them to a worthy cause. Donate? Hey, my. Well, hello, worthy cause. Hey, Joey, what about your cans? Well, I guess it's worthy cause time. Recycle. Aluminum beverage cans today. Aluminum food containers tomorrow. Save them for a worthy cause. Next Sunday, the NFL plays here when the Jets battle the Chiefs. Before your team takes the field, our team hits the air. NFL Live. Pittsburgh 17, Kansas City 16. A minute 55 left. Here's that last play. Mike Merriweather comes around the outside. Nobody touches him. He gets a blind shot on Bill Kenny. Fortunately enough, the Kansas City Chiefs get it back. My, uh, Merriweather again, he puts his shoulder pads and helmet right under the chin of Bill Kenny. And it's very fortunate that that young man got up after that play. It's also very fortunate that number 77, Rich Baldinger, was around that ball to get it back for them. Kenny and the Chiefs, however, will be facing a fourth down and long situation here. Our thanks to our spotters this afternoon, Don Wilsey and Kevin Mayer, and to Sweet Mom on Stats. 17-16 Steelers with a minute 55 left. Fourth down for Kansas City. Fourth down and 17. Kenny hit hard, but still in there. Snap. Kenny has it. Intercepted. Merriweather. Merriweather with the interception for Pittsburgh. Their fourth interception of the day. And that could be enough to win it for the Steelers. Stephon Page, the intended receiver. But Merriweather, good coverage, went up to get it for the Steelers. 
That's two big plays in a row by Mike Merriweather. He, you recall he had the sack on the play before the two-minute warning, and now he comes up with a big interception. Coming into the game, Pittsburgh Steelers were plus 10 in turnovers versus takeaways, and this adds to their total again today. And the leading intercepting team in the NFL now with 19 on the season. Seventeen, sixteen. Pittsburgh with the ball now at the 47 of the Chiefs. Just a minute 43 as you see and the clock starts. Jackson fighting off tacklers. Pounds his way short of the 40 yard line. He's over 100 yards on the day. J.C. Pearson made the tackle. We've got a timeout. Pittsburgh leading by one. No better value? Right. Look at the new Tandy family of business computers. These 286 and 386 based computers offer the connectivity and compatibility to let existing PCs share data. They run MS-DOS as well as tomorrow's OS2 software. And you can count on a proven track record of quality from a company with 66 years of technological leadership. That does add up to better value. <laughs> Tandy Computers. Because there is no better value. Only at Radio Shack Computer Centers. It's America's Day at the Races, the Breeders' Cup, coming November 21st to NBC. Tom Hammond and Michael Jackson again at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. Most of the 45,000 on hand streaming for the exits here with a minute 36 left. Pittsburgh with the ball leading by one. And a second and four. Jackson stumbles ahead and has first down yardage. Deron Cherry pinned him to the turf, but a Steeler first down. Well, Jackson has certainly brought the Pittsburgh Steelers running game back to life today. Another 100-yard effort for the NFL's leading rusher. Now let's go to NFL Live. Here's Bob Costas with an update. All right, Tom, San Diego is now 7-1. and one. They trailed at Indianapolis 13-0 at halftime, but here with 12 seconds to play, Vince Abbott's 39-yarder wins it for the Chargers 16-13. A week ago in overtime at San Diego, Abbott's field goal beat the Browns. All right, San Diego, as I said to Ken Edmondson yesterday, the Chargers are for real. Their only loss was in the opening game of the season here to Kansas City. How's this game been won or lost? Well, for the Kansas City Chiefs, their report card would indicate a poor performance by Bill Kenny, their quarterback, three interceptions, and a poor performance by the offensive line, which has allowed three sacks to a team that only had six coming into today's game. On the positive side, Carson with another good effort, and the special teams, including Lowry, uh, again, with a good performance. 131 left, third and one for the Steelers. I thought they picked up the first down. In fact, the officiating crew signaled that they had, but the spot left them a yard short, and Jackson will not get it there. Now this is gonna be very interesting. Do they go for the field goal, or do they go for the first down again? The Chiefs are going to get another chance. If they go for the field goal, then that'll put the Steelers up by only four points. You almost have to think they've got to go for that first down. They've got to keep control of the ball. You know, it was interesting. On the third down play, or on the second down play, it appeared that Jackson had the first down. The official signaled that he did. And uh, then while we were away, they had spotted the ball just a little bit short. And so it's become very crucial now. It's fourth down and less than a yard to go for the Steelers. And the clock stopped with a minute 25 left as the Chiefs used their last time out. Moe's over there talking on the sideline with Mark Malone. You would almost think they're going for that first down. They want to keep control of the ball. They don't want to even attempt a punt or a field goal at this point in the game. And you have to rely on your defense if you don't make it. The defense has played quite well for the Pittsburgh Steelers. There's the Pittsburgh report card. Malone still under 50% completions. He does have two touchdowns, but also two interceptions. But as a team, they have rushed for 241 yards, a key factor in the game. Carter has two touchdown catches, and Anderson uh, hitting the field goal. That has put the Steelers in front. 
Fourth and one. Abercrombie. He stopped short, I believe. It's going to be awfully close. This could require a measurement. Abercrombie thinks he has it. Jim Tunney, the referee, is called for the change. Well, he's going to be close. He ran down that line, that uh, imaginary line down there for the first down, and he was parallel to it for about five steps. Hackett of Kansas City said he didn't make it. Abercrombie was signaling he had the first down. The one that counts will be Jim Tunney, and he's called for the change. You almost wish you could add another link to that chain. They it didn't is. get it. Just He's short. short. Just short by a couple of inches. And so Kansas City will get a last gas chance. No timeouts left, but a minute 17 on the clock. That's plenty of time to get something. They just need a field goal, trailing by one. Dino Hackett may have come up with the biggest play of this game right now with that stop of our Abercrombie running down towards the first down marker. An outstanding tackle. Frank Gans shaking hands with some of his defensive players. There's Hackett, who had the legs driving to keep Abercrombie from getting the last two inches that made the difference. Double wide receivers to the right. Bill Kenny's in the shotgun. Across the middle. Knocked down at the last minute. Page was there. Rod Woodson. But Rod Woodson, the rookie, made a big play, his first big play of the NFL career for the first-round draft choice out of Purdue. He's got plenty of speed, Woodson does right now, to make that play. You're kind of wondering why they wouldn't keep that ball on the ground and go with the run. All they need to do is get down into field goal position. The reason they don't run is because they don't have any yeah, timeouts they, they left. they got no timeouts left and too much ground to cover. They, they can't afford to keep it on the ground. This pass is complete. Page makes the grab right at the first down marker. Remember, no timeouts left. The clock now down to one minute. A There's field goal would win it. Stephon Page is hurt, and they are going to be charged to timeout and, I believe, time off the clock. Final score in from that uh, St. Louis-Tampa Bay game. The Cardinals, once trailing by 28-3, to come back to win it 31-28. Stephon Page, you see there being taken down by Woodson. He turns his ankle, it appears. Maybe when he was getting up. No, no, he's faking. He's faking that. He's faking. They're going to be assessed the timeout. I don't think they have any timeouts left. In fact, I know they don't, but they may be assessed some time off that clock. Don't forget the second half of the doubleheader coming up next. You'll either see the Dolphins against the Bengals in Cincinnati, or you'll see the Oilers against the 49ers in San Francisco. Houston in first place in the AFC Central. Pittsburgh needing a win to stay just one game behind with a match coming up at Three Rivers against the Oilers next week. Here you see Stephon Page being told to go down, or I'm going to stay down and get the official on my side. They're running some time off the clock right now, too. They are running down the clock, as you can see, because the Chiefs didn't have any timeouts left. 17-16 Steelers. Chiefs have it with a first down at their own 48. Kenny got rid of it. It's dropped by Okoye. It's dropped by Okoye, and he had some running room. Yes, he did. He had a full head of steam up, too. Oh, look at the look on Frank Gann's face. He says, oh, we had it. This would have been like one of those cement rollers coming at you. Akoya had held on to this ball. Kenny gets a little pressure, steps away from it, gets the ball out to Akoya, who just simply takes off before he gets the ball in his hands. He's looking to see who he can run over. 40 seconds left. Pittsburgh by one. Second and 10, Chiefs at the 48. Nick Lowry could be the man that decides it. 
Dieters were offside. This is a free play. It's a good thing because Kenny is sacked. I believe Pittsburgh was offside. That is what the call says. You know, we said going into the last five minutes, the team that makes the fewest mistakes this last five minutes. Offside, defense. Five yards, still second down. The team that made the fewest mistakes during the last five minute period was gonna win. And right now that's gonna come to bear. You need a calculator though to count the mistakes <laughs> and who's made fewer. 17-16 Steelers, 36 seconds left. Second and five Chiefs at the 47 of Pittsburgh. Carson dropped it. He had it at the 24, it bounded off his chest, incomplete, he had it. Oh, and there's no one in this stadium who feels worse than Carlos Carson right now. I think he was quite surprised that the ball went through Donnie Shell's hands. He just runs the pattern down, down the field. He's going to the sideline. Kenny puts the ball a little bit high, a little bit behind him, gives Shell a chance to make a play on it. He misses it and hit Carson right in the chest. 31 seconds left. Third down. Five yards to go for the Chiefs. McCoy out of the backfield. He's got the first down. And out of bounds to stop the clock. The rookie who dropped one a moment ago grabs that one, picks up the first down, and takes it out of bounds. Right now it would be about a 57 yard of the ball at the 40. Be seven yards back plus the 10 of the end zone. So still not quite in the range of Nick Lowry as longest has been 58, but they want to get it a little closer if they can. I think that 58-yarder was against the Seahawks. 25 seconds left, no timeouts for the Chiefs. They have the ball at the Steeler 40, trailing by a point. Kenny! He's in the grasp and control. It'll be ruled a sack at midfield. And that could be the biggest play of the game for the Steelers. And there's Mike Merriweather, who has done a great job today putting the pressure on Kenny. No timeouts left. 15, 14, clock ticking away. Joe Green on the sideline. Kenny needs a completion. Oh. With the 20, one second, and the game is over. Page made a great reception. But the Chiefs unable to stop the clock. And the Steelers hold on for a one-point win. Page made a great reception, but time ran out. And it came down to those mistakes you talked about, Michael. A drop pass by Carlos Carson well in field goal range proved to be the difference in the game. Well, you waste your timeouts and you drop the pass down inside the field goal range. You know you're going to make it. You just can't afford to win. Then you throw the ball over the middle like that. You've got to score. It's unfortunate that they did not get in. Hard stopping finish. The Steelers hold on to win it 17 16. We'll be back. It's a tradition as old as the land itself. Your country calls, and you come. Your country asks you to give, and you give. And you do it all because you believe in your country. So to all the men and women who serve, Budweiser is proud to return your salute. Performance. For some people, it's more than a passion. It's a way of life. Well, for all those people for whom good enough just isn't good enough, there's Speed Stick Antiperspirant. Nothing is wider. Nothing glides on drier. Nothing gives you all-day protection in a bigger way. All-day performance that's unbeatable. If you're going to give 110%, your antiperspirant should give 110% too. Speed Stick, the white stick. Five minutes. 
Now it's time for the Most Valuable Player Award, sponsored by Budweiser. Today's MVP, Ernest Jackson of Pittsburgh, who rushed for 125 yards as that Steeler ground game controlled the action. Budweiser will make a contribution to the United Way on behalf of all the MVPs selected in today's game. So the Pittsburgh Steelers with the win go to five and three in the AFC Central and the Kansas City Chiefs dropping to one and seven on the year. Final score, 17-16 Steelers. Tom Hammond for Michael Jackson saying so long from Kansas City. A promotional fee has been paid to NBC by United Airlines, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. Hi there. You know, Jay Leno's hosting The Tonight Show this Monday, followed by a rerun of our show, Late Night. Gosh, Dave, you know, hosting is so much fun, I don't think I'll ever get tired of it. Yeah, me neither.